from the cold theaters of the world. This is Circuit Breaker. Brought to you by the entertainment site AwardCircuit.com. An in-depth chat on film, television, and all the award shows that need predicting. Here's your host, Clayton Davis. Hello, readers, and welcome to Circuit Breaker, brought to you by the entertainment website AwardCircuit.com parent podcast company of the Circuit Breaker Media Network. I'm your host and editor, Clayton Davis, here today on April 5th, 2020. Time of, record- time of recording is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is episode 182. You're getting a double dose this week. Uh, you didn't get a recording last week. We took a little bit of it off. We recorded. We just didn't put it up, but you're going to get both this week along with a bunch of other uh, Circuit Breaker, the extras that are happening and scheduled to happen. But here today with Joey. Hey, hey. Karen M. Peterson. Hello. And Ryan McQuaid's here today. Hello, everyone. You don't even go here. All right. <laughs> um, that's from Mean Girls. Does anyone ever doesn't know your good Mean Girls quote that you should have embedded within your soul on a weekly basis? Um, so it's April 5th. It's day 1 million of quarantine. I don't know. I've lost count on, on it at all, at all costs. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I got, I need to address the elephant in the room because some people were on the last episode of the extras and heard me talk about it. So let me just like put it out there. So last Saturday, uh, as in not yesterday, a week ago yesterday, uh, we lost my stepmother unexpected, uh, unexpectedly, um, as of right now, it looks like it was not coronavirus, which is, uh, I would say it's good, but like, I mean, it it was out of nowhere. Um, However, because of the crisis that's going on in in New York and New Jersey and our whole tri-state area and well, the world basically, but really uh, heavy over here. um, It's just been kind of hard for the family. As of today, they still have not gotten her from the hospital and it looks like it won't happen until April 15th. So that is like how much of the world's on fire right now. Like there is so much like, I mean, there's like the, there's the sadness of like losing someone. And then there is this aftermath that is occurring because there are so many people that are going. And then uh, obviously, which is one of the, I would say not even blessing. Cause it's like, it's, it's you have to find blessings when you, where you can find them. Right. So one, one of the blessings in this whole fiasco because um she was deemed not her death wasn't by covid 19 um in new york uh funeral homes of many of them if not all of them has stopped accepting patients or or bodies if they died from covid 19 so people are just like sitting in hospitals and can't be like buried or anything like that so it, that part's really really sad um this part that's sad with with my stepmother is because we can't have any services for her because all services have been suspended um but it, even the whole fact of like kind of everyone's mourning in their own separate <laughs> you know corners of of the united states right now which is which has been sad on its own but uh yeah i just wanted to kind of put that out there of what happened and uh you know families strong right now and all we can do is try to power through this thing as fast as possible so but i don't this isn't gonna be dour i'm gonna try to make it happy so get ready for a little bit of happiness uh mulan has a release date that's fun Yay. we can talk about Yay. that <laughs> it was it was it was it is very an opt- it's a very optimistic d- uh date though i will add because uh, it's deemed July 24th and I kind of wish I didn't say that. <laughs> I got to one. So you're saying it has its uh second or third release dates. Yeah. I mean, yeah, hopefully not. I mean, listen, I, in my head, this is over at the, <laughs> actually I'm deeming my birthday as the day that everyone like says, go outside now. So July 1st, that's what I'm keep telling myself. So if, if it's anything before that, I'm just going to be like, Oh, cool. And then if it is my birthday, then I'll be like, oh, so there you go. So that's what I've been kind well, of telling I myself. Mean, but who knows? Disney technically hasn't even moved the date for Soul, which yeah. is in June. 
Which, so which, I, I think the plan for them is just to make sure that whenever this uh, this lifts, that they're the first ones of the movie in the theater. Yeah, because because yeah. whoever is, uh, uh, let's be honest, whoever is that first one in the theater, oh my god, sold out oh, weekends yeah. like. Uh, or or that's why wasn't, or yeah. maybe or maybe it's not either going to be sold out or it's going to be terrible. Yeah, or no one's going to go. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm just going to stay home. Yeah, I mean that's why I think Warner Brothers hasn't moved Tenant yet because I still think that they. I mean, they yeah, July and see, but I yeah. I do see it still moving. I mean, I it's a, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, I, they mo- I would see Wonder Woman as their first big play, mm. and if they would have kept it around there, but they moved Wonder Woman and not yeah. Tenet, I guess. But I mean, Nolan is in their wheelhouse. He's yeah, like, I, I'm I'm thinking that the in my head. I mean, I listen like we don't know know anything, so this is all guessing. Just fair warning, but in my head, the Julys are pretty are like the safest bet if you're gonna like make a bet or whatever the mm-hmm. junes because right now there are only two junes still dated and that's soul and the king of staten island um and i'm and those are both for june 19th and it, if we're looking at kind of trajectory stuff i mean it could it could be or you know maybe those are fine and we're out of this by mid-may and then this is all a moot point anyway but uh, just to go over a little bit of some stuff that is that did move out and um, just to keep everyone on record here. So Peter Rabbit 2 has moved to January 15th, 2021. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is March 5th. Uh, the Eternals or Eternals moved to February 12th. Morbius moved to March 19th. Uh, Fast uh, 9 or F9, whatever you want to call it, uh, April 2nd of 2021 minions moved to july 2nd 2021 jungle cruise moved an entire year to july 30th uncharted moved to october 8th um and then just shifts in the year that got dates uh wonder woman 1984 is august 14th quiet place 2 moved to september 4th uh candy man moved to september 25th uh french dispatch moved to october 16th which actually I like that date a lot for it for some reason that just felt when I heard that when I was like, Oh, that's nice. That feels Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> something, something felt normal about it. Uh, no time to die. Moved to November 25th. Uh, free guy moved to December 11th. And I think that's it on that. But then there's the postponements that have not been dated yet. And that uh, there's one that did get dated. Which was that you left off for December? Oh, Black Widow. Wait, Black Widow's October oh six. And what's the other? <laughs> and wait, was there another one? Top yes. Gun. Top, Top Gun. Gun. Oh, oh, so sorry, Karen. I did not. You, mean you to should have known you. just by the How tone of your voice. So sorry. <laughs> Even I knew that. Yeah, I'm sorry. So Black Widow, uh, uh, November six, and Top Gun Maverick, December twenty third. Just in time for Karen's Christmas gift. Like FYC, Tom Cruise. <laughs> oh God, it's gonna be it's gonna be great for it. Uh then the 2020 shifts that have not been dated yet in the heights, which I th- which I still think they're gonna do this year. I don't I don't think they're going I mean, I don't know. Who knows? Uh Scoob be like <laughs> the new mutants. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Just uh, put it on Hulu. Uh, I know. Just put it on Disney Plus. Uh, on nothing antebellum spiral the woman in the window which uh, you know they're just like guys whatever you want to do we'll just do with that uh malignant greyhound which i still think will be this year maybe and then the tomorrow war it's depressing that spiral is the only one i care about of that list yeah uh, you need to get right in the heights in greyhound. and greyhound Grand's and honestly fun. after tom after tom hanks got COVID-19. Oh, he's going to make a I think <laughs> this year he's getting an Oscar nomination. Million dollar win. movie that's happening, Jesus. And then because of all those shifts that happened, a lot of other things shifted to other release dates. Uh, you know, it's a lot to cover, but I mean, essentially like, you know, Batman is still dated where we're supposed to be, I believe. Doctor Strange 2 moved. Um Mortal Kombat's January 15th. Let's just all discuss that for a minute. Jesus Christ. It's going to kill me. Uh, 2022, some shifts happened. Thor Love and Thunder went to February 18th, 2022. Then Minecraft, March 4th. Spider-Verse 2 moved to April 8th. Black Panther 2, May 8th. 
DC's The Flash, July 1st. Happy birthday, me, Jesus. Captain Marvel 2, July 8th. Indiana Jones 5, July 29th. Happy birthday, Karen. Mission 80 year old <laughs> Harrison Ford. That's what we Mission, want. Mission Impossible 8, August 5th, 2022. Aquaman 2, December 16th. And a Star Wars film, December 16th. This is all pending the next uh, virus, by the way. No. COVID-20 is going to mess with all this. Yeah, a little shifts around. So, Well, that's the thing. A lot of these things that have been moved that have new release dates, they had to stop production. They're not even yeah. finishing them yeah. until who yeah. knows when. So those dates, some of those, I think, will end up getting moved again. Yeah, yeah like Batman's not done yet. They were moving locations and had to stop. Yeah, yeah, Batman, Uncharted Batman, hasn't Batman, even started filming yet. Yeah, Batman can still make its date. It just needs to, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about, like, the the way in which we open up will be key into knowing what's going to shift. Because if it's, like, you know, if it's a mass open, like, all right, guys, we're open, and, like, everyone's just fine. If the second wave comes, as uh, Dr. Fauci has predicted uh, from the White, Ho- White House task force, then that is where people are going to – we're going to see a lot of shifts happen. It's, I mean, it's, it's going to be uh, a very weird year, a very weird Oscar season, very weird everything that we're just going to have to watch unfold. And, you know, the good thing is that, like, I think – the releases on demand, I think, are both helpful and still getting the things seen that, you know, need to be seen. Um, and not everyone's going to move to a mass thing, but I think we're going to have, obviously, a smaller pool of candidates uh, in contention. So it'll, it'll just depend on what happens there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. Uh, but don't worry. SpongeBob is still July 31st. So everyone can just, like, oh, stay there. God. Yeah. And the Purge 5. It was touch oh and go God. for a minute there. Yeah. What a double feature. Personally. Yeah. I was, very, I was, very, I think, can I just say, I was really happy to see that free guy was still coming this year because I'm actually looking forward to that. I am yeah. too. <laughs> it looks, I, I'm ready to be utterly disappointed by it, but I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I think it's weird that they moved it to December because. Yeah. Unless it's just not finished, like they might have had some stuff that they're still um, working on. Because I was, because I was looking, because if you look at, because you're looking at what's left in the in the year, right? So the summer blockbuster season is pretty much like fucked at this point, right? So like you know, mm-hmm. so you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, Disney, tr- like in 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 their mind, Disney's trying to own July with Mulan, and then it's going one week after Tenant, so that's already oversaturated, and then you do have the family programming with Spongebob. Then when you get into August, you're going to hit Wonder Woman mid-month. The week after that is Bill and Ted, um, and then you're just trying to figure that month out, and you know a lot of people are going to shift into August just because they want to get back as soon as possible. So right now, August just has infinite those two I just mentioned, the Hitman's wife's bodyguard. So there's that. Um, Free Guy, I don't think, should go in August. But then like a September and maybe during the school months is a little risky for it. But then you can, you just get into the um, the festival runs, you know. Then you get into Telluride and Venice. Yeah, and, sure we do. And sure everything. We do. You know, th- I, and I believe those will still happen. I don't I don't I don't think those mm. are off the table. I think those will still happen. But because I think they're going to be like really trying to make sure that those festivals happen as normal, then you really don't want to open a movie because people are just going to be with their ear to the ground, just waiting for something to be said, like best picture possibility winner or whatever, just to get them through or, you know, recover from this PTSD that they're undoubtedly going to have. Well, but the the people that are going to go see Free Guy, by and large, they don't give a crap with oh, no. winning the Venice Film Festival. Oh, no, but yeah, no, they they don't, but they're just going to want to, you know see so i mean free guys december 11th so i think actually going at the beginning of the month was actually a really smart move for it because you're going in between it's going to be the second week of james bond and raya and the last dragon and then it's the week before dune so that's actually not a bad spot for it because dune is opening against west side story and coming to america which is probably why in the heights there is i think a chance that in the heights does move out of this year because it's because I'm looking at the calendar. There's not really many places it can go comfortably. And it was real. And listen, we knew they were banking on 
like a June, like nice send off into the summer season and be able to saturate some of that July market, you know, especially with people like home and by home, I mean like that we're going to be on summer vacation, you know, Latino community, like going out there for it. Like there's really nowhere else to go unless it goes into August. But I think they want to make sure that August is free for it before, it, before they do it. Yeah. I think that, I think it, but then, you know, they want to market it a little bit and it's sadly it's going to get pushed because it's not like West side story. It doesn't have the, you know, obviously it has, you know, the Tony's and Lynn manuel Miranda's name on it, but it's not as well known as, as that Oscar winning classic. So, and it's got Steven Spielberg behind it too. And it's, yeah, I think they wanted and, enough space between West side story and itself, yeah, exactly. which, which would yeah. have been good. But the good, the good thing is that I'm looking at mid September, um, like right, the 18th and on, because then you go with because 18th is going to be like in the middle of TIFF, right? So then you're going Candyman, uh, last night in Soho, the Many Saints of Newark, and and listen, maybe In the Heights is also just going to drop at a festival now, because actually that may not yeah. be a bad idea for itself. Like if I, if, if you're yeah. at, if you're out of the summer months, like all right, we were gonna go for Oscar anyway, so let's just tent pole this thing. And just be like, all right, we're getting our world premiere at Telluride, and then we'll announce a date after that. And then that might be cool. So mid-September, you're going connect, connect, uh, Connected, The King's Man, Candyman, Last Night in Soho, The Many Saints of Newark. September's over. Then you go into October 9th, and then you're in Death on the, Death on the Nile, The Witches, on the same weekend. Uh, then the weekend after that is French Dispatch going against Halloween Kills. And then you have Snake Eyes on the 23rd with... Uh, Karen's husband you you are gonna have some you're gonna have to make some real hard life choices Karen this year (laughs) you're gonna have Henry Golding there and then like then Tom Cruise is in December and then you have like Ryan Reynolds at the beginning of the month and you're just it sounds like a perfect December what are you talking about it's like a way to (laughs) (laughs) it's my dream I mean but remember you're gonna have to like you're gonna gonna have to work too on top of that like you will be back at work (laughs) at some point right (laughs) like that's that is a thing I'm working now. What yeah, are you talking about? That is about? true. That is true. All right. All right. So there's that. That's uh that's news. That's that's all the news. Um well no, there's more news, obviously, because uh Film Academy donated six million dollars in relief to industry workers afflicted by the pandemic. Uh Tribeca is gonna be doing some online uh programming during uh the original dates for Tribeca Film Festival. Snowpiercer moved its date forward by TNT. And South by Southwest, uh, it's going to yeah. be doing a free online film festival with Amazon, which is cool. Uh, yeah, that's that stuff. Oh, and Empire is going to end sooner than expected because it, no, it's still on. Yeah, Empire's still on. It's, it's like it's like the only Fox show they can hold on to still for a while. So you know, hold on to that yeah. as long as they can. And they halted production on season three of Succession. So then, yeah, and Barry, see that <laughs> oh, and Barry, and Barry, <sighs> two great shows. It's gonna be Tiger King and What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, Tiger King's amazing. God, I've we're, been, and, and we're getting I've, and we're getting an episode this week, which is going to be yeah. amazing too. God, God, wait, what? Yeah, yeah uh, they just announced it. We're getting an episode of Tiger King this week, a new one. That got filmed. Really? Yes. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a, like you're wel- a lot about Jeff Lowe. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome, yeah. Karen. You are welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I did not hear about this. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. But uh, I'm excited. I've been actually catching yeah. up on Shit's Creek. I had never seen it. And I was like, I was actually going to say this time of no new TV is actually probably going to be good because I want to get through stuff I haven't gotten through. I've now been more incentivized than ever to make sure I watch things that I haven't seen before. Yeah, I'm ha- so. I'm halfway through it, and it's fantastic. Everyone was right. And what we do in the shadows comes back on the fifteenth, and I could say more, but I don't think I can, yeah. so I won't. <laughs> <laughs> dun dun dun! <laughs> it's coming at exactly when we need it to. That's all I'm going to say. Um. Okay. So I have here just a bunch of lovely Oscar history for us to indulge upon. Because uh, people, by people, our readers and watchers and everyone have been asking for um, a, like an Oscar-centric 
kind of podcast to really look at uh, the history. And we and we do that some by going through certain decades and stuff. And that part's been been fun. But uh, I wanted to really go through some uh, different films and then be able to tell you where you can watch them and if they are available. And then to let you know, obviously, what is out there and what isn't out there at all. So... <clears throat> I think it's just some, it's something for us to talk about and then to obviously show our disagreements on everything because film Twitter doesn't disagree ever. No. You know, <laughs> you know how that goes, right? So a uh, very, very happy, very calm, very agreeable lot there. Mm, yep, exactly. So uh, here's a little bit of, of history and then um, I'll ask questions, obviously, as we as we go through it. So using a, a few different sources here that will be uh, cited in, in the episode is I'm going to be using obviously the Oscars, uh, we're going to be using, uh, film, uh, film site, uh, and then obviously TCM here, but six directors have won the best director Oscar for their debut, uh, film. And I wanted to ask you guys, what is the best of these six and see who, who, if well, and see what you haven't seen or have. And then see what you believe. So Delbert Mann for Marty was the first, 1955. That's Marty. Uh, Jerome Robbins for West Side Story, 1961. Obviously, that was a co-director win. Uh, Robert Redford for Ordinary People, 1980. James L. Brooks for Terms of Endearment, 1983. Kevin Costner for Dances with Wolves, 1990. And Sam Sam Mendes for American Beauty in 99. Well, What's your Mark's f- not here to say dances with wolves. We know that. <laughs> I know, right? God. Um, the uh, I mean, I think the best uh, the the best I I revisit the most often probably is American Beauty, but there is a lot like all of them have admirable things, and it's, it's interesting to look at them actually as a whole to then see where their careers came after those directorial debuts. Um, I think it's interesting to look at that, but I think on its face, I'm going to say American beauty, but I feel like a lot of people rightfully will probably either say West side story or terms of endearment. Yeah. Uh, American beauty. My second choice would be terms of endearment. Marty third though. I like Marty a lot. Yeah. Marty's Marty's good. Marty's really good. And uh, Marty uh, also probably, I haven't watched a whole lot of as, as a as its own thing. Go ahead, Karen. You want to say something? Uh, I was just gonna say uh, I picked none of those. My my personal favorite out of those is Ordinary People. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think, especially in, in terms of a feature film debut, I think it's really stunning what Robert Redford was able to do. The performances in that movie are really spectacular. So yeah. Would uh, so I, I think uh, ordinary people gets a lot, a lot of flack now for uh, for like some I don't say for, for some reason but like it, it, it it's because of what it it's beat. A, like that's but, this happens yes, a lot but it, but it, it definitely doesn't get beat up as much as like something like the King's Speech gets beat up so it's True. it's beat up is it's very minimal compared to other uh, other things and items that have happened during mm-hmm. that year and actually I think as time has evolved. Uh, Others' palettes have, have, have evolved with it because I think the internet answer is like, oh, you beat Raging Bull, you're a monster. Um, and I believe like the art, the art, the artists, uh, the uh, artistes, the cinephiles of the world will say, you beat Tess, you monster. You shouldn't have beat Tess. Um, but then, then there's other cinephiles that will say the elephant man's right there. Like you should totally have done that. And then obviously when you get into, uh, the weeds in the year, you know, you're going to hear Clayton Davis be like, you know, empire strikes back was released that (laughs) year. You know, you could have just done the right thing. Um, and then there are people who will live and die by fame. Um, and other types of things but uh you were saying something ryan um yeah i i I think it's in terms of endearment for me but uh i agree with joey i love marty um ordinary people's good 
Um, and, but I don't think it gets nearly as much flack as something like Dances with Wolves because they, everybody on the internet loves uh, Goodfellas. And I think that that's the one I think off of all of them that get the most flack mm. over time. Yeah. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong about that. Well, I, I, well I, no, I think, I think, I think something is said for when you, when you feel like Scorsese should have won for Goodfellas and yeah. you just, then you just by nature will not go to his second, the second yeah. default choice. And then I think, and, a, crap, I and think that's why, a little that's bit with good. With Redford, it's not necessary. I don't think personally for me, it's never been about at least some of the things I've seen, not about that he beat the films that he beat. I think it's that the actor has no, it's one of the, it's kind of like the Brad Pitt thing where, oh, he has one for producer, but he doesn't have one for acting. And that how great of a career Robert Redford has for acting. And yet he's never won one that, you know, a best actor or supporting actor prize. Mm -hmm. And it's for directing. And I think that that's what some people have, you know, signal their crawl. It's still a good movie. I, and um, it's not my best movie that he's ever directed, but it's, it's a great debut. Yeah. If, if you um, also from the year that uh, I think people, bring bring a lot to the table is melvin and howard right it's jonathan demi's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh you know one of his early works that no not a lot of people have seen and i i don't think i've seen it in a as an adult maybe to to really like weigh in on it it's, it's something that i believe that we should probably revisit and actually let me look up now to see if melvin and howard is streaming anywhere yeah, um, it's one that I'm trying to find to stream because I know that the Blank Check podcast was doing a deep dive into Demi, and it's one that I've been trying to find, but I haven't found a lot of successful. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's actually not really anywhere. I don't think, it's not, I don't think you can get it on any platform. Which that sounds it's clearly only available on AC Stream, as we, <laughs> men as we mentioned this week. Joey had to be the monster and try to come up with a April Fool's joke when everyone was like, don't April Fool's us this year. I was supposed to play along and I ran out of time. And I yeah, Karen came up with the idea, had a two part I idea. Did. It was a good idea. Yeah. Asked me to do part two and then didn't do part one, hmm. <laughs> which I overtly reference in the piece. I'm sure you all read part one. Nobody read it. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, it was better that than something that people would that be like. That was a oh. double joke. Yes. It was a double joke. Y'all read the first part, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I do nice. like that a lot of people seem to fall for it and were mostly pleased by it. So it worked out. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Good work, you two. Good teamwork there. That's what I like to see on of, of the award ticket uh, staff. We were so we were so pleased with ourselves like three weeks ago when we came up with it too. <laughs> were you? <laughs> oh, we were we were delighted. Yeah. Um uh some other notable uh first time nominations for debut works, not they didn't win, obviously. Um, but just to get out here, uh, Orson Welles, Citizen Kane, uh, Sid Never heard of it. Sidney Lumet, 12 Angry Men, Jack Clayton, Room at the Top, Frank Perry, David and Lisa, 62, Mike Nichols, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Warren Beatty, Buck Henry for Heaven Can Wait, John Singleton, Boyd's in the Hood, Rob Marshall, Chicago, Bennett Miller, Capote, Paul Haggis, Crash, Ben Zeitlin, Beast of the Southern Wild, Greta Gerwig, Lady Bird, Jordan Peele, Get Out. What a list. I, I, I think Lady Bird is my favorite of that list. That's crazy. Uh, I think 12 Angry Men definitely is. And then I think Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf is right behind it. Those are all great. I also really love Chicago. Yeah, and I do love Chicago as well. I like Chicago. I like Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. People, I, yeah. I feel like the, the, the internet has tried to turn on Chicago, but they never successfully do it. <laughs> Like I, don't know, I see movie. a lot of people loving it. Yeah, no, pe great. no people. No, I think people do. I think people try to, but then they just can't it's hard. quite. Yeah, you can't quite do it because I think there's a few reasons why. I think one is there's no overt consensus on like what it should have been, right? Because you, I mean, you have gangs in New York, the hours, two towers, and the pianist. I think because of how toxic Roman Polanski is right now. You can't say that with a straight face. And hours gets beat up a lot. Um, and I'm usually not here for that. I love the hours. And Gangs in New York is so divisive on its own that, you know, then you're left with the two towers. And then you know that in your mind, you know, Return of the King gets it a year later. So then you can't really, like, crap on it that way. It's really, really hard movie to to like turn on in that way in, in comparison to the year. And there are also people who obviously they're the far from heaven crowd the talk to her, the eat the mama Um, about a boy, 
you know, that will, you know, ride or die by those as well. But, you know, I think you, I don't, you didn't, you didn't you get enough followers to fight the fight that you want to, or, yeah. or unless you're Karen Peterson and then you like, guys, there's a movie called Minority Report and my husband was in it and you should all watch it. <laughs> it's a great movie. It is a great movie. <laughs> Yeah. Should have been nominated. In a year of 10, it might have been nominated. No, it wouldn't have. It got one nomination. It was for sound editing. It would not have. I know. <laughs> year of 10, actually. Let me have I, my rewriting. Well, I'm story. actually looking. In a year of 10, I think you add... I think About Schmidt makes it, which is gross, because I hate About Schmidt. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie. I, of course mm. you do. You yeah. yeah. It's, yeah it's uh, not that great. I do. I would, and I do. Maybe Road to Perdition, I think, makes it. Uh, Catch Me If You Can, Maybe. Oh, that's, no, that, make, I that think, makes it. Yeah. That's eight. Oh. Talk to her, I think, probably makes it. That's nine. Because if it wins original screenplay, I think it maybe muscles its way in. And then you have to look for like a, a like a really weird number 10. And I think you can you could say far from heaven. I you, you may not be wrong, but I think you're like don't try to tell me Spider Man, because I don't think Spider Man does it. No. Um Frida, I don't think does it. it gets I, Frida gets close though, probably. Yeah, Frida could be the number. Frida, 10 Frida wins original score and makeup, and it gets nominated for art direction. And Salma Hayek's nominated. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you might. Wait, I think. Hang on. Wouldn't adapt, I think wouldn't adapt, adaptation? Adaptation. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did I not say adaptation? Oh, then. Oh, yeah. No. I definitely meant adaptation. Yeah, that's, yeah that's, I thought. I, I initially thought you must have said it at six or seven. Oh, I, I thought that probably was the six. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I also think this would have been the closest we would have ever gotten to a documentary nominated for Best Picture. I think Bowling for Columbine would have gotten really close. It might have. Uh, but I, I, listen, we have gotten really close means it could have been 20. So, I mean, but I just yeah. I, I don't think we've ever had like we even I don't think we've even flirted with the possibility in our lifetime. Not yet, no. Uh, here's here's some other cool stats. Um, only three directors have received two Best Director nominations in the same year. And I think everyone knows the Steven Soderbergh one for Evan Brockovich and Traffic. But you got Michael Cur- uh, Curtitz for Angry uh, for Angels with Dirty Faces in 38 and Four Daughters in 38. And then in 2930, you have Clarence Brown for Romance and Anna Christie. I've never seen either of those. I've seen Angels with Dirty Faces. I really like that. And I just got four daughters to add to my collection. I have not seen it yet. Yeah. I I guess traffic wins for me of that group. Uh, Karen, you're a Aaron Brockovich fan, right? Of Above Traffic? Oh, big time, above yeah. Traffic? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, four duo directing teams have been nominated for Best Director in History. Uh, and only twice have the duo directors won. So you got Jerome Rob- Robbins and Robert Wise for West Side Story. Uh, and we went over a little bit of that before. Then you got the Coen brothers for No Country for Old Men, uh, Warren Beatty and Buck Henry for uh, Heaven Can Wait, and then Coen brothers got nominated again for True Grit in 2010. And that's definitely the least of the three. I mean, yeah. the four. Yeah, it's, yeah. That's Be- best of three. I think I think the Coens bookend it. Uh, yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's two? West Side Story. Yeah, for me. Yeah. And I don't it's really, close. And I really don't like West Side Story, but I can always, I can, I've always been able to respect its direction. Like the opening of West Side Story is masterful in its like whole structure. So I've always recognized that its direction is is a yeah. the story of it, the story itself. It's just never been my favorite. Yeah, it's a better movie though. If I had to watch one, I would probably watch Heaven Can Wait first. Yeah, for me, it's Heaven Can Wait. Yeah. But I do like West Side Story a lot. Hmm. Uh, can you guys guess what the director with the most Oscar wins for films in the same year is? So they may have had one more than one film that year, but they have the most wins of, among all their films. Spielberg? Yeah. Do you know what year? It's the 94 year, right? 93. Or, you or don't, 90 you, year, don't you sorry, dare say that keep, backwards, sorry, Ryan. Sorry. Sorry, yes, 93. 93. Yes. Jurassic, Jurassic, Park, Jurassic, Jurassic Park and Schindler's Park. List. Uh, yes. Jurassic Park got three nominations, three wins. Schindler's List got 12 nominations, seven wins. Uh, and, that's, and, and I like Schindler's List more than Jurassic Park. Uh, Aka agrees with you, I think. I think I think it, uh, Spielberg won director for Aka for uh, Jurassic Park. 
I mean, that Jurassic Park is the only good one. So. Uh, Sophia, by the way, has been begging me to watch Schindler's List, and I like will not. And then she, then she keeps asking me what it's about, and I won't tell her because I have, we have <laughs> not had a talk with her about the Holocaust yet. So we are. I'm like, I'm like Sophia. When you're older, I promise I will tell you all about it's it. About a it's about a businessman. Like I am not. Like I'm just not. <laughs> like especially right now, I'm just like no. I'm not going to tell you how how ugly humanity can be. Like, yeah. let's not do that. Um, what, what has spurred her on to want to watch the three-hour black and white movie? Oh, because I have the wall that has, like, all the Best Picture nominees in order. Pick, so yeah. she converses with me a lot about it because she tries yeah. to stem conversation through them. So she she didn't pick Morty yet? Uh, no. No, she hasn't really gotten into the old stuff. Actually, the, you know what's funny? When she did ask me about Schindler's List, there's a uh, an orchestra performance on YouTube. Um for John Williams score. Uh, it's done by a mother and daughter and the mother, I, f- I forgot their name. It's, it's in another country, but the mother ended up getting into a car accident or something or had a brain disease or something, maybe a year or two before that. And they said she would never play the instrument again. And then she did. And that's her first performance. And she cries during it. her daughter's playing the violin. Her other daughter's in the audience and they're crying. It's like a very, very emotional thing. If you guys type in like Schindler's a score, it's like, it, you'll, you'll find it very quickly. It's pretty, uh, pretty baller remember remember when clayton said this would be a happy fun like laughing <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I was just saying that's what i saw um five females nominated for best director uh what's your favorite movie of the five so you got lena Wertmuller for seven beauties jane campion for the piano sophia coppola lost of translation Catherine bigelow hurt locker greta gerwig lady bird lost in translation my favorite yeah. of those is lady bird but i love seven beauties hmm I don't think the internet oh. as a whole has watched Seven Beauties also, by the way. I saw it in college and not since then. I have, I have not seen it, but I want to put it on the list. I'm adding a long list of things because, I mean, we're under quarantine. We can watch a lot. Yeah. Um, but Piano at the bottom. <laughs> but I would, uh, I, would, I would say Lady Bird. Yeah. But I really do love The Hurt Locker. It's a really good movie. I just wish... And I'm not saying that you just did this wrong because you didn't. But in general, I'm really tired of men on, especially on Twitter, proving to me how much they love movies directed by women by only ever (laughs) saying, oh, I love The Hurt Locker. I love Catherine When when, when that's like their first, (laughs) when that's like their go-to answer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's similar to me when I, when people are like, oh, I love Alfred Hitchcock. I love Psycho. I'm like, no. No, no doofus. <laughs> no. It doesn't prove anything. Sure you do. Uh, by the way, Seven Beauties. And Psycho's great, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Seven Beauties, by the way, you can watch for free on Canopy. Oh. It's on Canopy. Oh, really? So if you have a, yeah, a, if if you have a library, if you, have, yeah, well. if you have a library card, then you can uh, get Canopy. Wrote that down. Depends on where you're at. Yeah. New York also just pulled out of Canopy a few months. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, the least of them is by far the piano. My thing with the piano, I think it's a really, I think it's actually a really well constructed film. I just don't like the story. Yeah, I, I, again, yeah. directed very well. Just yeah, no, not it's beautiful. Just beautiful movie. the the story is like, and you know, maybe I need to give it another shot. No, maybe I don't. But like, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when Sophia wants to see it, then you're going to give I mean, it another shot. I mean, no, I'm not going to watch it, Sophia. Cause I don't feel like explaining Harvey Keitel frontal to her, but yeah. Uh, that's but, Harvey I mean, Keitel, and yeah. that's the rest of him. And that's yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty pretty like crazy. Yeah, that's to, that's when you can skip yeah. maybe for a while. Yeah. yeah. Um. Let's see. Did you guys know the, the you guys know who the first Canadian to win Best Director was? <laughs> Hang on, hmm. Let's see. If you look it up, that defeats the purpose. I'm not oh, looking okay. it up. I'm thinking Canadian. I don't know if I could I, before I read this. I don't know if I could even name a Canadian director like off the top of my head. I really can don't. You, uh, I, yeah. I mean, say, Denis uh, Villeneuve is the only one I can think uh, of. Oh yeah, Fre- I get French Canadian counts. Um, I don't know, but if you gave me like if you knew four of them and could do it in multiple choice, I feel like I could come close. Uh, but I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, uh, it just says here who the first was, and the first to win Best Director was James Cameron. 
Oh, no, I, did not know, I did not know he was Canadian. I know. No. That explains so yeah. much. <laughs> I, I like if it was Ivan Reitman had won something, I would I was I was all the people I know who are, I think are Canadian are not Oscar nominated that I know yeah. of. Mm. I just blocked I just blocked that man out of my memory, so I Oh, just... you and you and uh, Catherine Bigelow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well true. I just I I don't like James Cameron or his movies. Any of them? A lot of them. Oh, which one do you like? This this is very much like Michael Bay, Mark Johnson things. I need to know like where, what context you're holding this to. Aliens is good, but I I like Alien more. Um, All right, hold on. Actually, here, this, True Lies. Right, I'm, I'm, gonna make, I'm, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it easier for you because I'm actually gonna go through and let's see. Start with Piranha. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the Terminator. It's fine. Aliens. It's good. The Abyss. Not good. Oh. Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Good, but it, it, it's good, but it, it just... Uh, it's like Back to the Future. I feel like a lot of fanboys... Oh, you shut that up. up oh, for many Mike. years. Cut his mic. Cut his mic. Wait, we're, we're, <laughs> wait hold on. <laughs> wait, it's like Back to the Future. Why? It just feels like because so many perfect? people have propped that movie up over the years. It's like the greatest things since sliced bread and it's a good movie it doesn't mean that it's like the best movie ever made oh, they're, they're, they're good movies they're just not they're not the greatest movies piece. ever made all right true so, lies it's a complete ripoff of the original french film so yeah. titanic no i hate that movie um uh, avatar it's worse than titanic so <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, well, that, that, that's his. And, that, and that's his docu. That's, that's that's his filmography. That's his, yeah, besides yeah. Piranha Two: The Spawning. Yeah, um, I just, I I'd never, ma- I'd make an seen. argument never here were. that, and probably on its face, you're correct. Avatar is the least of his movies, but I'd argue he's never made a bad movie. I mean, I've seen Piranha Two, so he has. Made I, a bad I, yeah, movie. I haven't seen Piranha <laughs> Two, so I can't. I can't. But of the notable things Sorry. that we can talk about, Sorry. I don't. It's just I, the it's it's the one. It's the, he's just the one guy that I'm just like, no, hmm. like, okay, no. I agree with you, Clayton. I don't like James Cameron. The person, yeah. and that there's yeah, that doesn't often help. things about his movies. There's in every one. There's something I can point out that really bothers me. But as a whole, his movies I think are really good they're entertaining and it pisses me off every time yeah. because i want to hate his movies and yeah. i don't like but listen like let's be let's be honest karen <laughs> we're gonna get our shot soon <laughs> like yeah we are, are, we, though? Not, are not, we though not 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 only are we going to get our shot, we're going to get our shot for years because <laughs> we're going to get to be able to do it. I don't so, think that franchise so, is getting finished. I, I it's think, just gonna I think, never going to happen. I think this is what I think. I think we're going to get two and three, and I don't think we're going to get four and five. What do you I, think is yeah. more likely, Avatar five or New Mutants? New Mutants. <laughs> New Mutants. I, I, um, I think yeah. Avatar two. At least New Mutants is I believe, <laughs> Sure it is. We have no evidence it's ever been made, actually. So here, th- this is what I think is going to happen. I think... Avatar 2 is going to make a gajillion dollars because people are going to be fucking curious. But then I think it's not going to be good. And then Avatar 3, people are going to be like, I don't give a fuck anymore. And then they're going to move on. And then Avatar 4 and 5 won't get made. That's my prediction. I th- well, they're going to be made by then is the problem. They're making them all at the same no, time. No, 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 no. I, I think I'm, I think they're not giving. No, he's making. No, he's making them all at the same time. He's making two and he's, three right he's, now. He, he, no, he's making. He's, he's making them all. He's got all titles and everything. Know, but man. he's been he's been doing scenes four, four and five. But he does not have the like. It's not definite that they're coming out. They're dated in like the like it's a date, but it is not. If, if if Avatar two and three are a failure, they're not releasing four and five. No, but he's got a fail safe in that they'll have already spent enough money on four and five that it mm-hmm. won't pay to flush it down the garbage, I down the trash. That. I mean, you'll want to spend the rest waiting, trying to make it back. I'm just waiting for the Netflix uh, kind of Tiger King kind of docu series about James how Cameron. he's <laughs> used. Yeah, how he's used all this as a Ponzi scheme to like live off of for like the last decade because mm. he's just making submarines with it. Yeah, he's not really doing anything. He's not even making a movie or anything. <laughs> I can't wait to see that on Netflix. Eight episodes coming next fall. Uh, just talking head of Sigourney Weaver. Like he invited me to his house and he had a camera. But <laughs> Stop it. She narrates the whole it. thing. You know, I mean, um, which is kind of weird. It's got conflict of interest. Can you guys name it's the, the best thing Sam Worthington has been in? Can you guys yeah. can you guys name the first year which all five director nominees were foreign born? 
Uh, here, here, here's here, here, here's a here's the a 60s? hint because I think you guys need a little bit of a hint. Hint: I was alive for it. Oh, okay. Okay, that, that throws me off because I was going to say the 60s. Because you were going to go something yeah. early. So yeah, yeah I, I give you something to like keep you like in a time. No, I was, time I was thinking frame. like French, like the era, like when when European cinema started yeah. breaking out. That yeah, they would have had a year. I was thinking like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing. You gotta you gotta yeah. forget. You gotta realize that like. The production, and then I was like, matter. "Wait, where was Spike Lee born?" <laughs> Bro- Brooklyn, Karen, Brooklyn. And again, I wouldn't. I don't know this normally because I didn't know that half of these people were born in the countries in which they were born in. So I'm really bad at just knowing stuff. Yeah. Okay. Question. Yep. Is it born in other countries or actually from other countries? B- foreign born. They were born in another country. Oh, so they could have had so like their military Americans parents born in. Yeah. Uh, I, like I, mean, John, I mean, John McCain style. Yeah. So, because again, I, I think like Natalie Portman was born in Israel, but she's yeah. not Israeli. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I'm looking at this, and one of them, I swore, if you would have asked me ten minutes ago before I looked at this, I would have said they're totally from California, aren't they? Because <laughs> I don't, I've never heard them <laughs> speak. I don't think I've heard them speak in like ever. Because, well, let me just give you guys the answer because you're not going to guess it. Um, 1987, well, best director, Bernardo Bertolucci for Last Emperor. He's from Italy. Yes. Lasse Hellstrom for Hope and Glory. He's from Sweden. Norman yes. Jewison is from Canada. And he did, not and he did Moonstruck. Adrian Lin is British for Fatal Attraction. No idea he was British. No, I knew that. I, I knew that. He's a, he's a creepy European dude. And then John Borman is also British for um, Hope and Glory. Wait, Hope and Glory. What did I say? Lasse Holstrom was My Life as a Dog. I'm sorry. I read the wrong yeah. thing. So John Borman for Hope and Glory, Lasse Holstrom for My Life as a Dog. Yeah, Norman Jewison threw me. That's the one that would that would never have guessed. Yeah, I didn't know Norman Jewison was Canadian. See, these, these Canadians, man. But again, see, now it makes sense. <laughs> they're infiltrating. Yeah. They're getting in this. Yeah. They walk it's among a, us. It's a very polite invasion. We're building the no, wrong wall. It's not polite. It's passive aggressive. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> See, uh, if we built a wall up there, they'd never cross. They just complain about it very quietly, <laughs> and talk about how they could have built a better wall. Yeah, it's a pity you guys made such a bad wall, eh? We could mm. we could have made a nicer one. All right. The f- the five best picture winning films without their directors nominated. What's the best of them? That's Wings, Grand Hotel, Driving Miss Daisy, Argo, Green Book. There's only one good one, and it's Argo. No, there are three. Mm, Wait, read the list again? And a a little bit of four. Wings, Grand Hotel, Driving Miss Daisy, Argo, Green Book. I mean, definitely Argo. It's bad that Green Book's the second best. Wings is good. Grand Hotel is is good. Grand Hotel is really good. Uh, And and, and listen, I I think Green Book's okay. I think Green Book's fine. Do I think it should have been Best Picture? No. But I I, I still think it's Good, it's fine. Technically, isn't it, isn't it only four movies then? Because Green Book and Dragon Man's Daisy are the same thing. Hmm. Yeah, True. I'm just kidding. Um, no, it's Argo. Hmm. Um, only two films have won Best Director without a Best Picture nomination, but I doubt many of us or any, any of us have seen them. Two Arabian Nights in 27, 28, and then The Vine Lady in 28, 29. No. I don't, do you think we'll ever get that? Mm, no, I don't think so. Not as long as they keep the best picture more than Expansion? five. Expansion? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. If I'm it goes to... back to five, then I think it's possible. You could get... I could see a world where you could get, like, a Spike Lee gets nominated and possibly wins, but Black Klansman doesn't. You know, that kind of scenario yeah, where yeah, they really I'm... want to reward the director. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking right now. So, like, in... Since the expanded era, right? I'm looking and like, is there a possibility that like Roma didn't get Best Picture nomination and Aquadong still wins? You know, like maybe, because of maybe. the foreign language win, yes, because yeah. So I think we have. Well, I think it has to be almost a foreign language filmmaker. Like I think that's the only way we're gonna really try to d- decipher the code. Yeah. I, think- I mean, I could see a possibility of. Perhaps at some point, I think this is a long shot, but at some point, perhaps a animated feature director could get nominated. Yeah. yeah. And the film not get, but if it wins, you know, like I could 
I could see the possibility of a Brad Bird or Pete Doctor or somebody. Yeah. Making, I, I think see, that's like a, a longer shot than a foreign Yeah, it would be film, one of those but... guys, though, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's move to some acting categories. Talk about that. Um, so, obviously, only Daniel Day-Lewis has won three Best Actor awards. Uh, My Left Foot in 89, There Will Be Blood 2007, Link in 2012. What's his best? Of those three. Lincoln. Lincoln. There Will Be Blood. Karen. I said Lincoln. Oh, did you? I didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm also going to say There Will Be Blood. And then I actually say it's my left foot next. I think Lincoln. I think Lincoln's the least of, of his three. I say best performance and also best movie. Best movie? No, I still. I think I'm still no. on There Will Be Blood. There Will Be Blood I'm, is terrible. I'm, it's then I'm it's, cold. Then, I'm, see, I'm very I, cold. I'm There Will Be yeah, Blood. Yeah, well, I, it's a very cold movie. I can yeah, see. Yeah. I, I can always understand anyone who says they don't like There Will Be Blood. Um, but I would. I, I would actually say it's there for movie wise. I think it's There Will Be Blood. Lincoln, my left foot. Performance wise, it's they're swapped. Yeah. Um, uh, eight actors have won best actor twice. Uh, let's see who's the best of these. Spencer Tracy, Captain Courageous in Boys Town, Marlon Brando on the Waterfront, The Godfather, Gary Cooper, Sergeant York, High Noon, Tom Hanks, Philadelphia and Forrest Gump, Dustin Hoffman, Kramer versus Kramer and Rayman, Jack Nicholson, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and As Good As It Gets, Frederick March, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and The Best Years of Our Lives, and Sean Penn, Mr. Griver and Milk. Hanks. Who has the best Hanks and Brando? Yeah, I was saying, who has the best pairing? And I think, yeah. I think you, I think definitely it's between Hanks and, oh, wait, maybe not. Definitely not Spencer Tracy. Boy sounds not good. No. And a Captain Courageous, I don't think I've really seen yet. Uh, I haven't seen Sergeant York really. High Noon, Mark isn't here to scream for it. It's good. Uh, so they're good. both good, it's but so they're, good. it's very. He's middle of the pack in that in that lineup for me. I mean, Hoffman has a really good pair he does. pairing, and so does yeah. and so does Penn. Quite frankly, Penn, Penn, Penn would be Penn's my always going to bug me because of what he beat. Yeah. So I can't I can't do it. I just hate him. So right. yeah, <laughs> Kevin um, doesn't need another reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think it's definitely Hanks. I think followed by Brando, followed by Penn for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Hanks, Brando, Hoffman, Nicholson. That's my top. Four. Yeah, mine I'll, too. Go, I'll go. Brando was my number one. Yeah, I, can't be. I I love Nicholson and as good as it gets more than I should. <laughs> hmm. All right. Uh, most nominations uh, with only one win in Best Actor, Lawrence Olivier for Hamlet. What should he have won for? Is that um, is that representative of his career? I don't have a big issue with it. It's one of the things I think of when I think of him. I would argue he. <sighs> Do I mean this? I was going to say, I think he might have, she should have won for Sleuth, but I don't know if I mean that yet. No, that's against Marlon Brando. Never mind. Um, he's he's good in sleuth, but no, he shouldn't have won that year. Yeah, I guess it is. What did he? Who did he beat in forty nine? Because he's nominated in director. He beat. Man, he didn't beat really anyone big. Lou Ayers for Johnny Belinda is probably the biggest no. one in there. There's no one else that's really like notable. It worked out fine from them. Yeah, uh, Paul Newman nine uh, nominations, one for The Color of Money. I think he is very close behind oh, Pacino. Man for a really bad representation in Oscar world. I mean, I give him, it's not the movie he should be winning an Oscar for. It's not the performance he should be winning for, but it's the character. So there's at least a little bit more to it there. But yeah, I mean, if you take away competition, the verdict would be a great win for him. Uh, ver- cool verdict. Luke. He beats he over Ben Kingsley. Yeah, I'd be fine with it. I mean, cool hand. Luke's another good one. Uh, cool hand Luke. He is beating Rod Steiger. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. Yeah, I'm okay with all, either of those actually. Um, what unless you're gonna give him for... like, what do you say, Road to Perdition? Is that what you're gonna say? No. Oh, I, I was about to say only, only well, you know Ryan, so you're gonna have to tell us. Um, no, <laughs> no. I was no, I was I was gonna say um, I didn't know who he lost to for the Hustler. 
um, in 62. Do you know that? Uh, I got it right here. Hustler, he is beating uh, Maximilian Schell for Judgment at Ur- Nuremberg. Mm, I don't know if I can do that. He's great. And that's, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, what Joey said is he, he lost for that character already, so he already won for it. And it's kind of like one of those where you're combining it for the two films, but I still would have given him for the original. Um, I'm also, I think I'm okay giving it to him for a cat, a cat on a hot tin roof over. That's the one I would have given it David to him Niven. For. Wait, how does Karen feel about the color of money for reasons we all know? <laughs> well, I love the color of money, but mm-hmm. I, I agree that that's not the best representation. Like it, I would have been fine if that had been a second win. Yeah. Um, hmm. It shouldn't he... be his only win. Yeah. What were you going to say? How was he not nominated? But you can claim that Tom Cruise got him an Oscar. <laughs> Tom Cruise does that for people. He does. He's very good in The Color of Money. I love him in that movie. What were we saying, uh, Ryan? Ryan. Um, I don't know. I can't believe he wasn't nominated for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid or The Sting. Two films that, you know, are classics. And he's fantastic in both those. But he's fantastic in everything. He's one of the greatest actors of all time. Yeah. So Makes an excellent salad dressing, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Sting is a weird miss, especially given the fact that it wins Best Picture. Well, I, I think I think it's <laughs> he'd be in supporting, right? Uh, I think I think they can't. They probably campaign them both lead, and that's probably what yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, which is you know, but he should be supporting, I guess. Mm, nah. it's, it's tough. It's definitely it's tough. more Redford story, but yeah, yeah. I you could. Can, you can that's have. one that he's a straddler. He could go either way. If he had gone supporting, he could he have Yeah, won. actually, just just yeah, let you guys, uh, Redford won BAFTA that year, and Paul New- oh, and Paul Newman was nominated alongside him, so he was campaign lead. They were both lead. So that's what did it. That is what. That's exactly what happened. But Butch and Sundance, I mean, both of those guys not getting nominated. For um, by the way, Color of Money. By the way, I think the reason why I, I well, one, there's two reasons why I don't like it. One is that he got the honorary oscar the year before so he immediately won this which just felt like we not a great look they, yeah it wasn't a good look um also when he for cat on a hot tin roof when he lost to david niven david niven was co-hosting the oscars that year as well so don't like that look of it either but paul i would i would kill to watch that happen again though oh, just to see oh, the, like look, like if james look on franco face, if james franco had won considering what he did that entire night people would, that would have been phenomenal i would have been, loved it people would have set the world on fire um, i would have liked to have seen Anne hathaway's look of oh god i gotta give him an oscar now. but uh paul newman beats two pretty baller performances uh in color for color money he beats bob hoskins for mona lisa and he beats william hurt for children of a lesser god uh i'd be fine i'm still fine with newman there are three good performances there but i'm still okay i miss bob hoskins i do too but there's not as many things recently that he was doing that was like blowing me away but yeah there he was just he, he there's so many roles i feel like ray winstone was playing that like bob hoskins could be playing too yeah, Bob Hoskins also won Globes and BAFTA that year, so I think he was like really favored to win, like going in. I think that movie is very hard to find because I remember I don't think I could ever get it on DVD when I wanted it. Mm, yeah, or I overpaid for it when I bought it. I don't remember because <laughs> I think I have it, but I think I overpaid grossly. Yeah, for it. yeah. Also, same year, Pl- Platoon. Tom Berenger, man, they missed that. Mm. They missed that big. All right. Um, what else is on this list? Let's see. Um, any actress stats? No, I'm, I'm gonna get that. That's after this, but I want to finish nah. the best actor stats. Um, okay, here it is actors with the highest number of best actor acting nominations in total. Um, there's other people on this list, and then that didn't win or did win. So, uh, Jack Lemon has seven best actor nominations, he wins for Save the Tiger, and I hate that performance, mm-hmm. and I hate that movie. It's so boring. I'm trying to think what I'd have to win for. Where, what Jack Jack Lemon also has a really bad pairing. Like if you like, I mean, Save the Tiger and Mister Roberts. I don't like that at all. I, I think I do like Mister Roberts. I mean, I like him for. I mean, obviously the Odd Couple, and I love him in the Apartment. Mm-hmm. Love the Apartment. Yeah, I love the Apartment as well. And I think he's great. I think he's great in Glengarry Glenn Ross. Yeah. So yeah. Um, let's see who else is on here. 
Jimmy Stewart. Oh, he's he's a rough one too, man. This, this one hurts I love sometimes. Jimmy Stewart, he's my favorite. I know. Jessica loves Jimmy Stewart too. But he, he has five Best Actor nominations. He wins for the Philadelphia Story, which, by the way, is just Catherine Hepburn show. But it also mean, doesn't hold up. It gets enjoyable to watch still, but oh, like you mo- have to yeah. watch it through 1940s <laughs> lenses. <Yeah. laughs> It plays better when you look at movies referencing it as opposed yeah. to watching yeah. it. <laughs> I recently rewatched it. it. It's it's also like he's a supporting actor in a lead. In yeah, the, he he's a ver- he's lead. a very he's very thin yeah. lead in the in the movie because yeah. she just well that also because well, Cary Grant. It's also because know. Catherine Hepburn is so big and like I argue it's her, like her best work, but it's really really big. But Jimmy, so you got Mister Smith goes to Washington. And you're taking away from Robert Donat for Goodbye, Mr. Chips. I'm fine with that. I, yeah, that. that's that's the one that I would give him. But then you also have Clark Gable that same in the same category, and Lawrence Still Olivier. Still okay with it. And Mickey Rooney <laughs> for Babes. I'm babes, very much okay with it. <laughs> um, and then Jimmy, by the way, beat Charlie Chaplin for The Great Dictator, Henry Fonda for The Grapes of Wrath. Lawrence Olivier for Rebecca and Raymond Massey for Abe Lincoln in Illinois. So he was fourth or fifth in that lineup. He was totally four at minimum. I've never seen Abe Lincoln in yeah. Illinois. So Same. he was hundred percent number fourth or fifth. He's hundred percent number four at, at by default. Well, we would have been raging. Yeah, I actually think I think Henry Fonda I think is the best of that group. I know people revere Charlie Chaplin, the great, great dictator, but Henry Fonda is really great. I, uh, Oh, I, I like Olivier mm, and Rebecca. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah, I think I'm on Fonda also. Uh, if you give it to him for It's a Wonderful Life, you're taking it from Frederick March for the best years of our lives. No. See, that's, no, I can't that's do that. tough. I love It's a Wonderful Life. That's actually one of my all-time favorite movies. But, I, yeah. Hard to do. The best years of our lives. There's just something extra special about that one. All right. You get into 50. If you give it to him for Harvey... You're giving it to him over Jose Ferrer for Cyrano de Bergerac. I could do that also. That's my second choice. Uh, I'm not, I'm not okay on doing history. I love him in it, but I, that year I would have given it to William Holden for some. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that works too. Um, and you got Spencer Tracy for Father of the Bride as well the same year. Um, and then you go into 59. You can give it to him for Anatomy of a Murder. And then you're giving it to him over Charlton Heston. And I'm perfectly okay with that. That is Perfectly you can fine. pry that Oscar from his cold dead hands. Yeah. Also, Jack Lemmon's nominated for Some Like a Hot. And even though I'm not a big fan of that, I'd be okay if that was more representative of him because people I do, talk do, about that. do yeah. love that movie. That's the one. I don't love it either, but yeah, that's the one that I think probably Jack Lemmon should have won for. And looking at that lineup that year, yeah. Yeah, there was an opportunity. All right. So let's get into the women. Women are on our minds right now. Yes. So we got Catherine Hepburn winning four. Morning Glory. Guess who's coming to dinner? Line in the Winter on Golden Pond. Rank them. Hmm. Or tell me which ones you haven't seen either. Morning Glory, I think it's definitely, by the way, her least seen of her. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I've seen that. I haven't seen that. Morning one. Glory yeah. is you can. I've seen the Morning Glory movie at Harrison Ford. You can watch it on Flicks Fling. I think for free. By the that way, um, since we're on the subject of where you can watch stuff, uh, Mona Lisa is available on Criterion. There we go. Is it? Apparently. No. Oh, on a Criterion Channel. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 I was like, it is not a Sorry, Criterion release. The Criterion I would, Channel. I was like, I th- you can I, stream I thought, it on the Criterion Channel. Yeah, I was about to say. I was like, I would have had that. Year. Is it not out yet? Hold on. I don't think it's on Criterion at all. Criterion's having a sale right now, so you guys need to get in on that. If like, are they? Uh, yeah, it's all the end of uh, yeah, April. Thirty percent off. off. Uh, oh, it's out of print. It, it, it was out on DVD, and then they it's out of print. So then that's what it they was. Need to re- I, I they need to release I, it. I think it was one of those things when I wanted it on Amazon or Best Buy. It was like thirty something dollars, and I was like, I don't want it that much. Yeah, and it's and it's only on DVD, so you gotta wait for a Blu-ray re-release. That was the other thing I think. Also, I was like, Ugh. but you want us to rank them, Clayton? Yes, rank them. Um, I'd say the line in the winter for me. Then guess who's coming to dinner, and then on Golden Palm third of her performances. But I mean, they're all they're all really good. Yeah, you might be right. 
I swapped Guess Who's Coming to Dinner up to the top. Yeah, I haven't flipped. Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, then on Golden Pond, then Lion in the Winter. Oh. Lion in Winter in the middle for me. But it's it's pretty close. I just like Guess Who's Coming to Dinner as a movie better, so that, that helps. Okay. Uh... Who's got the best pair of Best Actress uh, trophies? They won two. So you got Louise Rayner for Great uh, Ziegfeld and The Good Earth. You got Betty Davis for Dangerous and Jezebel. Olivia de Havilland for To Each, Each His Own and The Harris. Vivian Lee for Gone with the Wind and Streetcar Named... <laughs> <laughs> Vivian Lee we, gotta, for... we have a leader. We have yeah. a leader. <laughs> Vivian Lee for Gone with the Wind and The Streetcar Named Desiree. I'm going to say it wrong on purpose now. <laughs> Ingrid, 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 Ingrid Bergman for Gaslight, Anastasia. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor for Butterfield 8 and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Just because Butterfield 8 is there, she automatically doesn't win. Um, Glenda Jackson for A Woman in, Women in Love and A Touch of Class. Jane Fonda for Clute and Coming Home. Sally Field for Norma Ray and Places in the Heart. Jodie Foster for The Accused and Sounds of the Lambs. Hillary Swank for Boys Don't Cry and Million Dollar Baby. And now Francis McDormand for Fargo and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Hillary Swank is my pick, and I know it's not popular. Hmm. I got to think about this. I, on its face. I like Fon- I like Jane Fonda a lot more than. On its face, I was going to say John- Jane Fonda, I think. But I think really it's Vivian Lee. I think it's hard to That's- argue that it's not Vivian Lee. They both are in my top five. Swank won. McDormand's in my top five, too, so I just need one more. See, I don't know. For me, like, going through that list, the two that I like the best are Vivian Lee and um, Jodie Foster. Mm. Jodie Foster or Olivia de Havilland. For- I think I go Swank, Foster, Lee, Fonda, McDormand. I... It's funny. I think Elizabeth Taylor has the best performance of all of them, and then one of the worst, and then one of the worst, <laughs> which is so she, runs, is she winds so, up at I don't like think seven. Her performance is bad. I just think the movie is bad. Yeah, I also, also I think it's a big thing of like what she beat. Um, well, yeah. To because who who was that year? Hold on, that is that's also when she said she was dying. Right? What's in that part of that whole thing? Uh, she beat Shirley MacLaine for the apartment. Hell, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that totally yeah. Yeah, sucks. Yeah, should have been McLean. Oh my god, because then Shirley MacLaine wins there. I don't think she wins for terms of endearment. I think they she, she might still. It was winning she, pictures. She, so. might, she might, but I think maybe they say with a straight face and give it to Deborah Winger. Or I think Mary, maybe Meryl Streep wins because Silkwood is I think baller. W- and I think I think Winger wins before Street, but you never know. Actually, that's a really good point. If Shirley MacLaine had won for the apartment, Deborah Winger probably would have won for. And she would have an Oscar today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I I know Karen might get mad at me, but I the Elizabeth Taylor comment. It's kind of how I feel about Vivian Lee. Ryan, Karen doesn't need a reason to get mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I know because I just I'm, I'm. What's your argument now on Vivian Lee now? I, just don't, get mad at you. I think she's really great in Streetcar Named Desire, and I and I I don't like Gone with the Wind as a film in general, and a lot of it rests upon her shoulders, and and, and I just don't like her performance in the film. Clayton, somewhere Terrence just had a heart attack. Oh, I know. I, I I can hear Terrence Johnson wailing right, right. now, just wailing. I think I, I just I just hear the the shade somewhere in the distance. I am saying the, besides, the performance is actually a really perfect translation of the character from the page mm. so if you don't like the performance it's because you don't like the character yeah. which, which i guess would yeah, pretty I mean, much yeah. feeds into him not liking the, the movie or story yeah which yeah. is but, fair but, but i would yeah. but i will no, say no, about vivian no. lee it's especially she couldn't even desire vivian lee because that is first of all like one of the greatest quartets of any mm-hmm. film like in history and oh, it so is good. it is the most visible it's the most visible fight that you can see of acting of styles that's ever been demonstrated in a movie when you see method versus traditional and the 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 fight on screen 
about and it is it is such a it is such a masterful dissection of like where the turn was happening in acting and it, you you see it live like every time you watch the film and Vivian Lee is so great in it and it was and I and, yeah. I, and I always think what if they got two people to swap what if Marlon they got someone like Marlon Brando that wasn't doing method that was just doing some traditional stuff and then Vivian Lee's character was going to be some method, like Natalie Portman, Black Swan type performance that like gets into the roots and gritty of it. Like, what would that look like? And it offers so many different things that I can't, I can't even imagine. But her work there, and I will never have anyone disrespect her like that again on this podcast, <laughs> like ever. I'm sorry. Like, ever. That movie's magical. Is is is. No. Yeah, Marlon Brando, what? by the way, straight, everyone who no, knows... Sugar, who, no, I love that movie. Yeah, everyone who's ever read my list of top 10 greatest performances of all time, Marlon Brando's my number one in that film. Like, he is everything that I've wanted to be in a movie. Not in real life, because he was weird as fuck. Um, <laughs> so, and an asshole. Uh, so, let's see, consecutive Best Actress winners. There's only two, Louise Rayner and Katherine Hepburn, and I think... Perry and I think Catherine Hepburn wins by default because she wins for guests who's coming to dinner and lying in the winter back to back. I mean, you can't. Yeah, it's hard to do that. And she t- and tied for lying in the winter. With um, actresses to win two actress Oscars before the age of thirty. There are four of them: Louise Rayner again, Betty Davis for Dangerous and Jezebel, Jodie Foster accused in Silence of the Lambs, and Hilary Swank. Swank and Foster for me. Jodie Foster. Hands yeah, down. definitely Foster. Yeah, yeah, I think it's Jodie Foster. Hillary Swank's wins are impressive, though. I don't like that she gets totally shit on, even though I think her second one is so overtly undeserved. But I think I think our first one is so earned on who she beat and what she was able to accomplish. But her second, it's one of my favorite performances. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great track. it's a great performance. And like you know, I think when you look at it, I think her and. K- and and that Benny are just uh, are <laughs> they're ju- destined to do this forever. Yeah, they're just dest- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are. They are the Joker and Batman. That's just what where where it is. Um now listen, I think Swank over Benning part two, definitely. Like million dollar baby over being Julia. Like Ooh. I Yes. By thousands and thousands. N- of yeah, percent. that that's yeah. Boys don't cry and, and I just think that Benny was kind of in the wrong category. I think she's supporting ish. She could have, she could have been there, and it would have made life a whole lot simpler. Yeah. God, I just want her to have an Oscar one of these days. But then you then then you don't have Angelina Jolie having an Oscar, and then that's. I'm okay with that. She I, can still get one. She's so great in Girl Interrupted, though. Yeah, but the, her, but the, I would. The movie's I think problematic. Benning is better than. Yeah. Actually, Karen, do you like Girl Interrupted? Mm, not really. Yeah, I was, I was like, it doesn't seem like a Karen like <laughs> movie. It just, I don't think it's, so. It's one of those that I, I feel like it needed a female director. Yep. It's all over the place. Like there are parts of it I really like, and parts of it I don't like. It's, Wait, is that mangled? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. It's it's the least wow. mangledy movie he's oh, made. Oh yeah, he's for a, sure. Yeah, fairly yeah. a hundred. Like he's a really consistent director. It's his least consistent movie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. I don't hate the movie. I just, I think that it did need some more focus, and I think it really could have benefited from a female perspective. It's one of those that I think I was looking at his filmography a couple months ago, Karen. I was like, he did that? Yeah. Like, it was It was very shocking. Yeah. Like, hey, he, good he, for him. Yeah, like, I, the movie, I think, could benefit from, like, one good cut. Like, one good edit. Maybe. Yeah. Like, I think there's something to be said, like, it needed some more time in the room. By the way, also, um, I mean, it's a mangled movie in retrospect, but not of the time. Copland. Because he got... I, he it's got, my favorite of his. Because he got a good performance out of Sylvester Stallone that wasn't Rocky. He he gets good so many good performances in that movie. Yeah. That's a movie that I would argue, if he made it now, would be an Oscar movie. Because he's such a tighter director now. Mm. Like if he if he was able because it would be the same story I think it would be just a little more stylish a little tighter I think it would have been a way bigger deal because I remember when it came out there was a little buzz about Stallone but it faded pretty quickly it was it was just really it was small it was really small yeah like it was it was one of those movies that 
nowadays, like it's the equivalent of I'm trying to think of the right movie, almost like a waves. Like people saw it, really liked it, and you had the sense that it could have done something. And then when it didn't do anything, it just never did anything after that. It just determined its own fate. Hmm. Love them. Okay. Um, four actresses have won Best Actress for their first screen role and there is a thing in parentheses here that says substantial so like Catherine Hepburn is on this list for Morning Glory but she previously had bit roles in A Bill of Divorcement and Christopher Strong but uh, Catherine Hepburn is on this Um, Louise Fletcher even though she had a previous bit in Thieves Like Us Uh, Marley Matlin and who's the other one Uh, Julie Andrews Nope, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was right. No, no, Catherine Hepburn is not on this list. Sorry, I'm, I read this wrong. Because because they're not considering her because she had bit roles. So the, actually, the four are Shirley Booth and Come Back, Little Sheba, Julie Andrews for Mary Poppins, Barbara Streisand for Funny Girl, and Marley Matlin, Children of a Lesser God. It's not even close. It's Julie Andrews. Uh, I, I might go Marley Matlin. I I like Barbara Streisand. They're all pretty solid. I don't have an issue with any of them. Karen. I love Julie Andrews. I'm not voting <laughs> against her. Yeah. Um, and then the other people on this list that were that were nominated didn't win. Catherine Hepburn uh, for Morning Glory. Greer Garson, Goodbye Mr. Chips. Julie Harris, the member of the wedding. Maggie McNamara, The Moon is Blue. Janet Sussman, Nicholas and Alexandra. Diane Ross, Lady Sings the Blues. Louise Fletcher, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Why? Oh, because she had previous bit roles. I was like, why wasn't she on that list? But that's why it makes sense. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. She went the, otherwise. Whoopi Goldberg, The Color Purple. Emily Watson, Breaking the Waves. Keisha Castle Hughes, Whale Rider. Uh, Catalina Sandino Moreno for Maria Philip Grace. Gabourey Sidibe, Precious. Quavenjane Wallace, Beasts of the Southern Wild. And Yalitza Abadicio, Roma. Emily Watson. Whoopi. That's a Whoopi, really good one. It, it, Mine's Whoopi Goldberg. It's Whoopi. Whoopi. Yeah. Whoopi. It's Whoopi followed by. Luis, followed by Gabri Sidibe, I think. Interesting. Yeah, now I'm thinking about it. Like, Whoopi's not in a ton of movies. I don't think I've ever not liked her in something. And I don't think I've ever necessarily not uh, liked a movie. You've never in. seen Eddie, have you? I love Eddie. Oh, God. I love Eddie. <laughs> Whoopi coaching the Knicks? How do you not know I would uh, like this movie? I mean, listen, I love the Knicks too, but like, come on. No, I'm not even a Knicks fan. I just like. I love I love crappy sports movies. Rookie of the Year, Little Big League, Little oh, Giants. I t- oh, I do too. I love those movies. I just don't like Eddie. Um, I just I love how bad how inaccurate they are and how easy it would be to be accurate. So oh. you sit there and you go, "That's not how this works." Yeah, you can also, watch sports. Yeah, I don't know if you saw Nobody's Fool with Tiffany Haddish last year too. So she was in. That. Oh no, she no, I did that. not see that. Yeah, I didn't even know. Um, oh no, I, I know she's in it. She's in the trailer. At she the plays end, the like, mom smoking right? out. Yeah, she's like yeah. hanging out of a window smoking a cigarette or something in the trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no. She makes a joke about being high. She was also in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the reboot. I saw that. It was fair. Nobody's perfect. (laughs) Yeah. She's got a pretty high batting average. But to prove Joey's point, though, I'm going to look. I'm going to look. I'm going to go look before 2010. All right. I think that it gives it a little more fair stuff when she's not playing herself also by the way i think yeah, she's just yeah. cameoing and collecting okay paychecks. right right now it just ended <laughs> medea goes to oh. jail <laughs> it ended in seconds <laughs> when did she do that oh my god 2009 oh wait Asian. never mind she plays Whoopi. never mind so wait we're, okay, so, yeah, we're still, so in, the doesn't count. still in the game doesn't still in the game all right if i had known i was a genius i've never even heard of that um so we can't say for sure world and that's a paycheck homie simone don't even know what that is um <laughs> sounds like it can't possibly be good uh, yeah. though. <laughs> um okay let's say we have to have seen it to, to paulie short it. oh paulie short is dead she plays herself never mind um <laughs> she, my God, she's got so a always playing herself she's like don't pay me to uh, be me i'll be there when Ooh, rat race I Whoa. love Rat Race. Uh, rat Race is fine. It's not Mad 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 World by any stretch, but it's, it's fine. It's hilarious and it's really fun to watch with a group of friends. Uh Monkey Bone. Yeah. Oh, Monkey Bone I did is, see that one. Monkey Bone is so weird it doesn't even become good or bad. <laughs> That's a bad movie. Uh Kingdom Come. Uh is that what? Hello Cool J? Yeah, it is. I knew I was like, I knew I knew that movie. Uh I don't ooh, remember. Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> Um, oh. <laughs> Girl Interrupted Deep End of the Ocean Ooh, Deep End of the Ocean 
Oh. So we really got to say, like, after Girl I'm in Interrupted. The, I'm in the, all right, so let me, right, I'm in the 90s now. Okay, so let's start Girl Interrupted and work our way back. All right. Yeah. So yeah. Girl Interrupted, Deep End of the Ocean. Good. Uh, Good. Oh, I'm a- sorry. Allegoria? I've never seen that. Okay. Uh, Rugrats movie. Absolutely. Um, yeah. How Stella Got Her Groove Back. Absolutely. Um, yeah. In and Out. Absolutely. Why? Wait, where Absolutely. is she in In and Out? Oh, she's in one of the, like, See, she plays herself. Never mind. Um, yeah. Ghost of Mississippi. Ooh. I love Ghost of Mississippi. Don't you oh. dare. I love that movie. It's so easy to hate James Woods. Oh. So it's it's pretty, like, boilerplate as, like, a legal drama. And it's not going to teach you anything about Medgar Evers you didn't know. But there's something about, like, she's really good as Medgar Evers' widow. Alec Baldwin is like the comes around from being vaguely racist lawyer was pretty good. But James Woods as a racist, it's so easy to you hate. You mean him. as himself? He's, <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's just playing himself and we didn't <laughs> yeah. know it then. Like he's never looked more lizard like. Yeah. Like he's like Eastwood and Bridges of Madison County level lizard. My favorite and James just, My favorite oh. James Wood performance is in Scary Movie 2. That's how much I hate him now. <laughs> It's just a shame. I used to like him in movies. Yeah, it's a piece of garbage now. Uh, the Associate. I've never seen that. It's like when she's like a boss or something. Oh, Bogus. I hate Bogus. That's what. Oh, is I that know. the one with them? Uh, Gerard Depardieu it's, and Haley Joel yes. Osment and yeah. Nancy Travis. <gasps> Where is Nancy Travis? I used to love her. I love The Vanishing. She she retired after you complained about this movie. No, she was in Last Man Standing. Yeah, she's still doing uh, that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is and it she, is is. Is Caitlin Deaver still on that show? No, no she left. No, she knew. Oh, she knew thank her. God. Um, she went to college. Quote unquote. Okay, <laughs> let's see. So then we have Eddie. We're in the mid '90s, so we have Eddie. Uh, Boys on the side. I like Boys on the side. I liked that movie. She's a voice in the Page Master. I like the Page Master. Karina, Karina. I love, I the page love Master. Karina, Karina. I love Karina, Karina. Aw, good Ray Liotta. I think by we're the just way. remembering the '90s. I know. When I said this, oh, she's yep. she's in Little Rascals as Buckwheat's mom. <laughs> i never i don't i don't think i've seen that oh, since it came yeah. out um then you got sister act two back in the habit uh made i love made in america uh she's in loaded she's in loaded weapon one and i love loaded weapon one <laughs> So I will always live and die with my sister act <laughs> i never knew that until now but i'm zero percent surprised uh, yeah Ser- seraphina <laughs> oh i remember seraphina sort of um the player and the player is right. fantastic. Yeah. Oh. And Soap Dish. And oh, yeah. Long Walk Home and Ghost. Ghost is what she starts the 90s off with. Okay, so in the 90s is her, she, is her she, time to shine. She's definitely over a 75%, for sure. Yeah. Well, she's also just playing herself now, so she's yeah. essentially retired. Well, she's hosting The View. She's busy. Yeah. They probably pay her more doing that. That she can do essentially in her pajamas than they ever paid her in movies. Um, interesting little note here. It says against type. It also helps to play a role against type. Julia Roberts as a crusading single mother in Aaron Brockovich, or Helen Hunt for a sex surrogate in the sessions, or Susan Sarandon as a death row nun in Dead Man Walking, or for showing Are they is that really against type so much as a different character? I don't like that. I don't like that description at all. No, that's not accurate at that's all. Just, that, that's, it, that's against type acting. is way more yeah, against type is is if you're really pigeonholed into something like like if Tom Cruise played um, I'm sorry if Tom Hanks played a clan member that would be against type. Ooh. Also, he'd win an Oscar for that. So. But then it also says guys, it's, it's, let's, it's, let's it's, write that movie. It also says here or for showing acting diversity and their examples are Kathy Bates as the horror villainous in Misery or singer Cher in Moonstruck. That none of that is against type in the least. I don't get this. That's uh, that's very bad. Line. They're just different roles yeah. i mean but that that could be anyone for anything that's a terrible oh category. here's a great one prostitutes a large number of actresses have also won or <laughs> been nominated uh top acting awards for portraying hookers girls of the night party girls whores call girls madams etc or loose women mistresses promiscuous ladies etc here are some so we're examples just, we're labeling in people who like sex with people who get paid for sex got it <laughs> All right. i mean i got you just Good to know just so readers know i am not reading this from awardcircuit.com this is coming from yeah, filmsite.org where, where so this please from? no okay all right so there here are examples janet gaynor uh one best actress for Street Angel, 1927. Uh, Helen Hayes for The Sin of Medellin Claudette. Judy Holiday for Born Yesterday. 
uh, Vivian Lee for a streetcar named Desire. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's, um... Wait, is that labeled under loose? <laughs> what, let me see. No, I gotta read this description. Vivian Lee won the Best Actress Oscar for her role as fragile, gen- genteel, tarnished, fallen, desperate, and aging Southern belle Blanche Dubois. None of that is a prostitute or a loose no. woman. No. Blanche Dubois has had sex in her life. She's a slut. Clearly, I mean, that's what filmsite.org is saying. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> um, Joanne, we've, we've gotten to the bottom of it. Joanne Woodward in The Three Faces of Eve. All right. Susan Hayward in I Want to Live. Elizabeth Taylor in Butterfield 8. Melina McCurry in Never on Sunday. Shirley MacLaine in The Apartment. What? I'm oh, offended by this. Oh, hold on. Shirley MacLaine was. She's not a loose yeah, woman. Sh- she's sh- just, I mean, she's having an affair with her boss, but. Shirley MacLaine was nominated that's... for Best Actress for her role as Fran, the insurance company's depressed, quirky elevator girl who was seduced to be the mistress of Jack Lemon's. Oh, uh, they. I, so. Film, that's, film that's, site that's, that is written by so, periods, okay. right? So it says. So the description of the prostitutes thing, it says prostitutes or loose women, and loose women in parentheses says mistresses, promiscuous ladies, etc. Etc. I love the etc. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we don't talk about you know Fred McMurray. Yeah. No, he's he's what's called awesome in that movie. Apparently, according uh, to them, Shir- <laughs> Shirley MacLaine and Darlene, Julie Christie and McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Jane Fonda and Clute. What? Oh, yeah. Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman. Okay, that's actually accurate for we, once. We, we have one. Yes. Hey, yeah. There we go. Sharon Stone and Casino. Oh, she's sort she's of. an ex hooker. Yeah. yeah, she's an ex hooker. Yeah. yeah, okay. Elizabeth Shue and leaving Las Vegas. Yes, yes. And Charlize Theron in Monster. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, I, I go Elizabeth Shue, but most of these are disqualified. Uh, it's Charlize Theron, definitely the best of all of them. But th- I hated the section. This was a terrible section. <laughs> no, and we gave it the time of day. Mm. Philly Christie is wonderful, and Kate Miss Miller. But yeah, it's probably Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth Shue is also one of my favorite performances. Mm, okay. Um, five mute. Or non-speaking performances. John, uh, Jane Wyman and Johnny Belinda. Patty Duke in The Miracle Worker. Uh, Marley Matlin, Children of a Lesser God. Holly Hunter, The Piano. Um, and then they included two supportings here. It's uh, Samantha Morton in Sweet and Lowdown. And Rinko Kikuchi in Babel. Um, Marley. Is this including nominees or just winners? Nominees and winners. Because um, hmm. Sally Hawkins should be in there. Oh yeah, she's not on this list. Yeah, yeah. maybe enough. it's not. A, maybe it's not new enough. No wait. But then again, didn't Green Book show up on one of those yeah, lists? Yeah. So no, they just didn't add her in there. So th- so they're just they hate women. Oh we wait, got it. does she <laughs> wait? Does she sing though? In the she just yeah, it's it's yeah it's in, like in a, a dream sequence. Yeah, yeah, it says mute or non-speaking. I I, don't, I think you have to be. I think there cannot be a word spoken. Well, then I guess so, well, with, I so, think wait, that that so is then, a ridiculous that excuse Patty to Duke get them out of leaving somewhere else. Sort of list. then disqualifies because yeah. she does yeah, make noises. Kind of. Add Sally Hawkins in there. She it says, no, Marley looks... Matlin, truly hearing impaired, won the Best Actress Oscar for her mostly silent, realistic performance as a deaf school pupil. Mostly silent. So they, 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 silent. they negate themselves in the sentence. Yeah. Sally Hawkins should totally be on this list then. Yep. Yeah. We're just doing. We're just. We're just. We're just. We're just being annoying to them. They hate us right now. Like, well, but Marley Matlin. Well, yeah. and Sally Hawkins would be at the top of my list too. Because mm, yeah, yeah. I think that's a Marley, great Marley great Matlin for me. Uh, few actresses have been re- uh, fictional actresses. A few uh, actresses have received Best Actress nominations for playing fictional actresses, performers, or stars who were Best Actress winners. Janet Gaynor, Star Is Born. Betty Davis, The Star. Judy Garland, A Star is Born, and Maggie Smith, California Sweet. And then, in parentheses here, Faye Dunaway was the only performer who won an Academy Award Oscar for her own uh, for network and then went on to portray in the film Mommy Dearest, a real-life star, Joan Crawford, who won it as Actress Oscar for Mildred Pierce. And then Kate Blanchett's Best Supporting Actress Oscar win for The Aviator. Mm. So I think, can, I think we can. I think we. Well, I think we can. Only, but because they're talking about just because well, we well, they're talking about oh, just okay, best just actress. Best. So if best mm-hmm. actress of the four, then it's Judy Garland. Yeah. Yeah. Always Judy. Well, wait. Does um. Oh, never mind. I was going to say, does mm-hmm. Renee get added to this now? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, two country singers' performances: Sissy Spacek and Coal Miner's daughter Reese Witherspoon walked the line. 
Reese. It's basic. Oh, it's basic. Really? Basic yeah. is good. Yeah. I don't like the movie, though. I don't love either movie. I like both performances a lot. I guess I prefer Walk the Line movie Why? I don't know. They're both good. Oh, see, now I'm really getting mad at filmsite.org. So they have a section called Mediocre or comp- <laughs> Compens... <laughs> so stupid. Oh, Oh, I'm going to be mad at this already. Oscar victories for Best Actress haven't always been for the star's best work either, but retroactively for an entire body of work or for sympathy. But they did not provide... By, by the by. But they did, did they not provide for that actors? for actors. Oh, so, so only women are what? in bad movies. So here, gotcha. here are the examples oh, they provide. Yeah. Men only win based on merit. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. only win when they were in there supposed to. Al Pacino. Yeah. Um, well, well, Leonardo well, DiCaprio. Well, clearly, the men are pulling their weight while the women are slutting it up, according so, to filmsite.org. Yeah, we yeah. got it. So here you go. 62-year-old Marie Dressler's Best Actress Win for Men and Bill was a tribute to her entire career. That was in 1930. Like, it's like the yeah, third yeah, ceremony. Sure. You can't, we can't even like say that with a straight face. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Betty Davis won her only two Oscars for Dangerous and Jezebel after being passed over for Of Human Bondage. She would have other one she would have rather won for her better performances in the letter and all about eve in nineteen fifty. Did, did they ask her like uh, yeah, this, excuse this is just, me yeah. but jezebel is green yeah. she's fantastic yeah just, so i can't know. wait to see where this goes as we keep going down this yeah. list elizabeth taylor's first best actress win for butterfield eight was a sympathy vote for her near fatal bout with pneumonia and for being passed okay, they got one. and for being passed over for a cat on a hot tin roof two years earlier i mean the, 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 sort of. The, I, that's what they sure. thought of when they came up with this list, and then they r- okay. worked around it. Yeah. Catherine Hepburn also acknowledged that she probably won the Best Actress Award for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner over Faye Dunaway for Bonnie and Clyde and Anne Bancroft in The Graduate because Spencer Tracy, her longtime lover, had just died. Her other Oscar wins for Morning Glory, Lion in the Winter, and On Golden Pond, but she should have won instead for Alice Adams, The Philadelphia Story, and The African Queen, and Long day's journey into night so she should have won like nine oscars no they're saying that's what should be her four. Oh, that should be her four? Oh, okay whatever maybe well definitely line the winter is definitely earned yeah i mean i can co-sign with you on philadelphia story whatever and the last one faye dunaway won best actress for network oh no they're not about to oh so so wait, is Network mediocre or the performance? Faye Dunaway won Best Actress for performance in Network, but she should have won earlier for either Bonnie and Clyde or Chinatown. Okay, but that does okay, not... Okay, but that doesn't mean she shouldn't have won for, for Network. network. Yeah, they, yeah. We are now... Re- so, we are, so, we so, are be, really so remember, so on the mail list, Heath Ledger won for The Dark Knight, but he should have won, won for, for Brokeback Mountain. Mountain. So yeah. The Dark Knight is now a mediocre no. win. I got it. I got him. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh. Well no, they didn't do that for the men. He yeah. deserved no, because, ev- yeah. everyone deserved every award that they got. I mean, you could do that you could do that for Leo, you could do that for like McCon- I mean, you could do that for so- everybody. Jeez, it's terrible. Oh, filmsite.org. We don't uh. like you anymore. <laughs> Uh, reprising an acclaimed stage role, four Best Actress winners won the Oscar for an acclaimed stage role. Judy Holiday, Born Yesterday, Shirley Booth, Come Back, Little Sheba, Anne Bancroft, The Miracle Worker, and Barbara Streisand, Funny Girl. Ooh. Uh, Barbara and Judy. I've never seen Come Back. Bancroft, Streisand. Bancroft, Streisand. Top two. Barbara Streisand. What'd you say, Karen? I said Judy. Judy. Always Judy. Yep. I knew you liked Judy's the movie. Always Judy Greer for me, actually. <laughs> yeah. Longest time period between first and last uh, nominations. Ooh, this is good. What's better Ooh. of the two? 48 years, Catherine Hepburn, Morning Glory, and Golden and On Golden Pond. On Golden Pond. On Golden Pond is better. Giant. The best. Better yes. of the two. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yep. 46 years, Alan Arkin, The Russians Are Coming. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no. Not The Russians Are Coming. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. And Little Miss Sunshine. Why is he on the actress list? Wait, is this also nominations or wins? Because he got nominated. It was doing first nomination and like win between their last and then two. Win. Like the longest okay. uh, gap between the two nominations. Be, okay, between being nominated and when they won. No, being nominated when they were no, nominated. No, when they again. got their first win and their last win. Well, or okay, not even, not even as that'd be a win, just nominations, period. Okay, so, it could be nomination so first or nomination or win. and last nomination. Yeah. 
But that wouldn't be his last nomination. No, though. Alan Arkin, there was a gap between Hard as a Lonely Hunter in 68 and Little Miss Sunshine in 2006. That's 46 okay, years. So it's just, so it's just it's your yeah. first nomination and when you first win. Yeah, whenever the, okay. your last nomination was and then your or the, the other one okay. for that. Uh, I vote Little Miss Sunshine. Uh, yeah. for, uh, yeah. 41 years, Henry Fonda between the Grapes of Wrath and On Golden Pond. Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. I'm going to go on Golden Pond. 39 years, Sylvester Stallone, Rocky, and Creed. Ooh. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky. by Miles. Ro- Rocky, though, Rocky feeds into Creed. I'll say Rocky. I mean, obviously. But, but, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like uh, it's close. The one and two for me of his performances. Copland three. I'm going to go I'm gonna go with Rocky, though. Creed's very good. Uh, Jack Palance, Sudden Fear and... I'm sorry, Shane and City Slickers. Shane. 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 I really like City Slickers. Uh, I, kn- I knew you would. <laughs> it's I a good show. No, right. Wait, 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 Karen. Shane or City Slickers 2, The Legend of Curly's Gold? Oh, come on now. She, oh, knows, Shane, she knows better. Sure. She knows better. <laughs> <laughs> um, City Slickers was the, the film debut of Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, 38 years, Helen Hayes, between The Sin of Medallion Claudette and Airport. Oh, Airport. Airport, oh, I've God. never seen The Sin of Medallion Claudette of the prostitute yeah. list. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I haven't either, so. <laughs> Me yeah. neither. Airport. Albert Finney, uh, Tom Jones. Uh, no, it's not. That's a lie. No, wait, what? Yeah, he, he yeah. never won. Tom Jones. Mm-hmm. No, but it was, it was nom- nominees or a winner. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, wait, first nominated for Tom Jones in 63 and then received three more nominations. Murder. This doesn't make. No, he's not, he doesn't count on this list. It's stupid. No, it doesn't make Beca- Because Murder on the Orient Why Express, would- The Dresser, or 74, 83, Under the Volcanoes, 84, and the Aaron Brockovich is 2000. It's like there's. I like. I like how we again advertise this as a light, happy podcast, and we've just raged at one website well, I, the entire this is time. Actually, this is actually getting a lot of stuff <laughs> off my chest. I'm able to throw my anger towards something else that isn't it's just, like it's just therapy. It's just therapy yeah. is what it is. Aaron Brockovich is his best performance, by the way. Uh, of that group, yes. I like Big Fish a lot. Ooh, uh, only four. Big Fish is really yeah, I meant of that group. Yeah, yeah. only four. Wait, what? And by four they mean thirty because this side. L- l- let me make sure. <laughs> let me make sure that they're right. Because before I even read this, I want to make sure that it's correct. Um, because it just doesn't seem right when I when I'm about to say it out loud. Nope, they're right. Okay, uh, only <laughs> four women have won two Best Actress Oscars, and it's their only actress nominations. So they're two for two. So yeah, two actress winners. So they, oh, they could have won supporting also because they threw them. Bulked in this list okay. too. God forbid they got their own list. Uh, Lu- no. Louise Rayner, Vivian Lee, Hillary Swank, Helen Hayes. Vivian Lee is what I had to look up. I was like, is that really her only two? But I guess it is. Mm. Well, I still say Swank. It's still Lee. Vivian Lee. Oh, uh, Hillary Swank. Uh, seven films have won Best Lead Actor and Lead Actress categories. Uh, Happened One Night for Clark Gable and Claudette Colbert. Uh, one Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest, Nicholson and Fletcher. Network, Finch and Dunaway. Coming Home, Voight and Fonda. On Golden Pond, Fonda and Hepburn. That's Henry. Sounds of the Lambs, Hopkins and Foster. And as good as it gets, Nicholson and Hunt. Sounds oh. of the Lambs. Sounds of the Lambs, though. As good as it gets is my number two. So my one and two are Cuckoo's Nest and Network, actually. Yeah, those are my three and four. Cuckoo's Nest would be my two. Yeah. They'll flip. I think Network three, Cuckoo's Nest four. Yeah, I, th- I think it's Lambs, Cuckoo, Network. Then maybe it happened one night. It happened one night's great. Um, I guess it's my five. Five films with two Best Actress nominations. All About Eve, Baxter and Davis. Uh, Suddenly Last Summer, Taylor and Hepburn. Turning Point, McLean and Bancroft. In terms of Endearment, Winger and McLean. And Thelma and Louise, Sarandon and Davis. In terms of Endearment. Uh, I'm actually going to go Thelma and then Turning Point. My favorite of those is All About Eve. I figured. This seems Karen. All about this seems Karen. Followed too. very about- closely by Thelma and Louise. I Term- agree with everything Karen said. Terms of Endearment, All About Eve, Thelma and Louise. Top three. Hmm. And then uh, lastly, uh, 
I'm going to end it here because this, this list was whoa. This went down a rabbit hole of like, what the fuck? Bad. Yeah. Uh, our African American Best Actress nominees slash winners because only been one. So this is not a very long list. Uh, there have been 12 actually. So there's 12 Best Actress uh, nominees. We're going to rank them. So we got Dorothy Dandridge for Carmen Jones, Diane Ross. Diana Ross, Lady Sings the Blues, Cicely Tyson, Sounder, Diane Carroll, Claudine, Whoopi Goldberg, The Color Purple, Angela Bassett, What's All Got to Do With It, Halle Berry, Monsters Ball, Gabrielle Sidibe, Precious, Viola Davis, The Help, Quivenjane Wallace, Beast of the Southern Wild, Ruth Nega, Loving, Cynthia Revo, Harriet. I, I know my off the top of it's going to be Whoopi, Angela, uh, Dave, the... Davis or Sidibe? Whoopi and then Ruth Nega. She's my two, I think, on that lineup. Mine is Angela Bassett, Whoopi Goldberg, Cicely Tyson. <sighs> yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, what Karen said again. Yeah, Karen's. You're just Karen's trying to Karen's Karen's trying. Trying. No, no, it's, no, it's. Look for, at no, him trying to score points. Guys. No, Wait, next are... you're going to say you like what we do in the shadows. I know. Yeah. I mean, it is a great show and a great movie. You're, you're late to the party. I actually haven't finished the full season, but from what I've seen of the first season, what we do in the shadows, it's great. I just, you know. Mm. Did catch you get up? to episode eight yet? I have not. Got, no, I got to about episode five, and then I just, I for some reason with comedies, I have a bad time of catching them on television, so it's so I usually just binge them when they come out. So, so you're it's saying on there's a show, so you're saying there's a show that yeah. There's a show that I'm ahead of you on. Yes. That's not good. Episode 8 is one of the greatest episodes of television that existed last year. Okay, I will watch that, but I'm also catching up on Schitt's Creek. and I'm As I've, you should have four years ago. I, I, I understand that, but I've watched <laughs> three seasons in two days, and I'm powering through it. Traveling, traveling, traveling through. Clayton, you really need to get on Shit's Creek, man. It's so good. <laughs> I've watched some of it. I just haven't finished it. I, I, I do I like just, episode I just, nine I just better than episode I've eight. I've watched it like four times I, I just, all the way I just, through. Fin- all the way through? I just finished uh, yeah. All My Block. I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up for the because the finale is this week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Thanks for reminding me to be sad. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to go. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. I'm well, just going to. La- last thing. Last <laughs> bit I feel like I want to share. Uh, the two years... They have the record number of non-white acting nominees. Do you know what the two years are? They both have seven. I want to say it was like like a couple of years ago, like 2017? No? Am I wrong about that? I'm wrong. Yeah. You can, you can give your guess, Ryan. With it. You're not going to... No, no, no. Uh, he made like his guess. guess. No, it's like, no, it was like... It's actually, right you're actually after, close. You're actually really close. It, it, was, it was like it was 2017, 20, 20, 2016? 2016. Yep. That's one. Yeah, yeah. And the other... It doesn't like you know it, Karen. Mm, I can't. Remember. You know it. I'm trying to think what year it was. You know it. <laughs> I've, I've, was it the I, year I've that a um, bunch of times. Don Cheadle and no, was it 2004? No, that that's one of the high. That that had a year of, that five. That was one of the highest, but that's not the okay. highest. But that was close. And you're close in the year, so it's around that time. 2005. Nope. Four. Um, 2005. Black people were that season. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> that's Robert Downey Jr. Tropic Thunder. It doesn't count. That's not that oh, year. Anyway, no, that's, that's not. Tr- <laughs> no, that's not that. No, no, that's 2005 that, that, is not that year. It's the Heath year. Ledger that's... year. There's nobody that year. Yeah, that was 2008. Yeah, it's 2006. Yeah. It's 2006. Right. Yeah, Will Smith. Oh, is that with the Will, Will, Smith, Will Smith and then Forrest uh, Blood Whitaker, Diamond, right? Jaimon Unsu, Eddie Murphy. Will mm-hmm. Smith and Blood Diamond, yes. Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> Je- uh, Jennifer. Jaimon no, Unsu and Blood Diamond. Then Jennifer Hudson, Adriana Barraza. Rinko Kukuchi. Rinko Kukuchi. The seven. Kukuchi. And then 2006 and 16 yeah. is Denzel, Ruth Nega, Mahershala, Naomi Harris, Viola Davis, Octavia Viola. Spencer, Dev Patel. Mm. But but next, that was a the, good the next closest is 2004. That's Jamie Foxx, Don Cheadle, Morgan Freeman. Uh, Jamie Foxx again. I don't know. Yes. It's counting twice, yep. No, so that doesn't no. it, does, it counts. It's so, two separate yeah, nominations. Sofio Canedo and Catalina Sandino Moreno. Mm-hmm. The first year that multiple black people were nominated in acting categories was 1972. Diana Ross, Cicely Tyson, Paul Winfield. One day, guys. One day. Yeah. 
And then filmsite.org will make a passive aggressive category about it. Yeah, or they're gonna <laughs> or they're gonna do a retaliatory <laughs> podcast. And it's gonna start battling. This is gonna be like a rap this battle. Is gonna get, every year is gonna get worse. It's gonna be here's the year where white people should have gotten that nomination instead. Well, listen, it's, we it's I was I was utterly fine with reading like most of their stuff off this stuff until we got into the prostitute. Until we got into the prostitute and loose women. Like that's where it really well, came off a cliff for me. Listen, this this website is funded by the Puritans, and now we know. Mm. Clayton, did we ever get like a rundown of the all the um, directors that um, uh, African American directors? No, um, oh. I mean, I know none of them have I mean, never it's, won. It's, I mean, it's, but, a, it's a very short list. I can, I can. Yeah. yeah, I know, I know that. But I know we did women, you know, as well. Yes, so those are I, both. I can, I, I can short. read that list. Sure. It, from memory, it's, it's in yeah, from memory, but oh. it's on his wall. Yeah. It's like. You know, it's scrolled in blood on the wall. It's just, it <laughs> exactly. needs to be there. Uh, just to make sure, because I don't want to, like, lose one. But, um, so you got Barry Jenkins. Hold on. I didn't get it. Okay, here it goes. Quentin Tarantino. Spike, Spike Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spike, yeah, exactly. Spike Lee, Jordan Peele, Barry Jenkins, Steve McQueen, Lee Daniels, John Singleton. Hmm. I got Spike. Yeah. You know what's funny? All of them made history in some way their year, except for Spike Lee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is funny because he would be the person you would think. Well, I mean, he, think, who would set yeah. a record? Who would, well, who would make history? So, I mean, well, was, like, he, I mean, he did kind of, well, he wasn't the first one adapted screenplay or anything like that. So, he, yeah. so John Singleton obviously was the first, and he's the youngest ever nominated. Lee Daniels was the yeah. first uh, African American director to also earn a Best Picture nomination. Steve McQueen, uh, first black director whose film also won Best Picture, and he's first black British person. Barry Jenkins, yeah. second plus second black director to win a Best Picture film, but then he also won an Oscar in screenplay. And then Jordan Peele yeah. was the first to be nominated for directing picture and screenplay for a debut film. Spike Lee did nothing. Have any of them been nominated twice? Uh, Barry Ooh. Jenkins, tech, well, in director. In the, yeah. in, no, 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 no direct. I didn't think yeah, so. No director has ever repeated. The only repeated that have come back again to be nominated uh, in like either another category or not was uh, Jenkins, Peel, and Spike Lee. Yeah, yeah. and Pe- Peel. Wait, Peel has he, 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 He's back. a producer on Black Clansman. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. No, yeah, I'm sorry. I was thinking no, about a lot of people don't know that. That's the egregious that, errors I'm not mad from last year. Yeah. There's plenty to be mad at me about, yeah, folks. And that's that, not one of That's them. definitely not one Listen, of them. It wasn't like that day we had explained to Mark <laughs> why, you know, Penelope Cruz, how how Penelope Cruz was not. Oh, my God. I heard yeah. that. And it was yeah. like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, listen, I, I can't get mad. Sorry, I, I can't get mad at people who don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. So I can't get no, mad yeah. at people not knowing. As long as you learn. I thought you were gonna, it it I was a little were... bit of Green Book and real, right, just right on the site. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say that you got mad at Mark at the the time for the whole Brad Pitt thing with the acting. Oh, I'm oh I'm always going to oh, no, always going to be mad at him for that. that. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that's ridiculous because that's just stupid. Yeah. I mean, the guy's got two statues in his house. Yeah. I mean, he's got two more two more than I do. Mm-hmm. You know, it's also the same reason why Michael Douglas two is two time Academy Award winner Michael Douglas and not one. Yeah. I'm curious. Then, what do you think? So, somebody like Robert Redford, and does he consider he won, he won a director award? Oscar? So he's fine. Yeah. So, well, no, because he would. Well, I mean, does he? He could probably consider him an actor. So he would probably then say, "Well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm sorry." Mark I'm only hates I'm producers. sure that with the fact that everything gets negotiated, mm. if Brad Pitt wanted to be billed as Academy Award winner, Brad Pitt, he would have. Been. <laughs> yeah. This is true. Listen, he just didn't give a shit. This is also the same reason why I I consider this is why we we have to consider this. Danny DeVito is an Academy Award nominee in my heart, and he's always yeah. going to be because he produced Aaron Brockovich. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He produced a lot of movies. Yeah, yeah. did he produce? He produced Pulp Fiction. I thought no, it didn't didn't get credit. He didn't, or, get, isn't, he didn't get credit for it. Yeah, no, but his company was involved in it. It might have gotten put into turnaround. He was definitely involved with it at one point. Probably, yeah. Yeah. But you know, yeah. that that's the way it He's works. The only one to direct any Tarantino or produce any Tarantino movies. Yeah, he was, he, was an, he was an executive producer, by the way, on Pulp Fiction. Yeah, and he was also produced. Co- he was also a producer on Reality Bites, and that shit rocks. Yeah. Well, well, his uh, I forget the name of his company, but he picks up a lot of he picked up a lot of Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman mm-hmm. pictures. 
Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's something else. Like they <laughs> they they were at it. They were instrumental in Garden State getting made. Like they they do a lot like that. They do, that you don't think of him doing. Like yeah. he's a pretty like hands on producer. Yep. I'm trying to think of the name of the company. Karen, do you like Reality Bites? Uh, I remember liking it when it came out, but I don't think I've seen it since the nineties. I thought it would be something like you revisited, like for your life. No. I've never, I've only watched it once either. Did I? Th- yeah. They'll be looking for us, yeah. but they won't be looking for Jersey, Jersey not film. Us. All right. Uh, Joey, we're going to follow you. Uh, at Joey Maggotson, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, Ryan, you're playing the dude disguised as a dude playing another dude. <laughs> not can, not with the makeup. Yeah. Make it very clear. Are you guys ever wait, just real side note real quick. Are you ever Uh-oh. like you have to acknowledge how cool Robert Downey Jr. must be to in order to have skated out of Tropic Thunder with no type of like a night assassination on like yeah. film Twitter. I think it's because there was more attention on Ben Stiller and the whole mm. Mentally simple jack thing. yeah yeah the simple jack stuff. yeah there was there was enough targets there that it's yeah getting, it was a but, scatter I mean, shot i mean it's it, right there hated. it's an easy get all right go ahead um uh ryan go ahead it's because tom cruise danced into their hearts and made them yeah. forget yeah. <laughs> clearly exactly mcconaughey with the tivo you can find me at ryan mcquade 77 on Twitter and Instagram, and let us know next week what website you'd like us to go over <laughs> <laughs> which, and destroy. Which, which websites do you want us to attack next? Yes, we are. Which, we are for hire. St- Film yeah, site that to at awards brought, or, brought, to, <laughs> brought to you by AMC, by the way. So, what was uh, what was Mark's website years ago? Um, and the winner is, I think. No, no, that's Scott Feinberg's. Um, that's Scott Feinberg. <laughs> um, I forgot. I don't remember. Karen, uh, Karen we're going to follow you. We'll make that the next one. Yeah. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Karen M. Peterson. Do you know Tom Cruise that whole year, Karen, was just nominated for a Golden Globe and a Houston Film Critics Society Award for T- Tropic Thunder? I know. So sad. It, do, do you believe he's best in show? Yeah. <laughs> in life? Yes, she does. No, but do you think he's the best part of the <laughs> in movie? In that movie, he's definitely, even though, it was, I mean, it's technically a cameo, but it's such a standout. And it's he has the most memorable, I think, moments in the entire thing. So yeah, if, for if, sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw this out there. If you Uh-oh. if you have a night with Tom Cruise, right, <laughs> and he says you can have me do the risky business dance or the Tropic Thunder dance, which one do you choose? <laughs> and we w- risky w- business. no Hello. no wrong answer. <laughs> No, you ha- that's the right answer. You have to see him do it not in the makeup. Oh, um, that changes things. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. mm, see? Follow me at Award Circuit. Download us on Stitcher Radio. <laughs> Go to iTunes and Spotify. You can listen to us there. Go to wordcircuit.com for your entertainment news. Go to hub.awardcircuit.com for your predictions, even though I haven't really been updating them because... I would just yeah, know what's coming. Out. Well, yeah. I mean, now I think I can start doing just update them all with just a big shrug. Yeah, I can do. A, I can do a <laughs> few more. Like, I think I could do a bunch more deletions now than like normal. But yeah. these are my predictions. Yeah. Well, I mean, you yeah. can also go way deep, way harder on things that are early. You like normally would have no chance because who the hell knows? I mean, listen, I mean, I'm, I'm keeping in the heights on there. Yeah. If I don't see Tom Cruise on your long list, it's invalid. Uh, he, he was on my long list. He was, uh, Tom Cruise's number 33. All right. Just I, I think it should be a little higher I mean, now. I mean, but, I think he can move up right. a little bit. I mean, just by n- nature of math, <laughs> I think he can. Yeah. Just want- <laughs> but he's there. That's all that matters. I just want the virus to end so he can go back to making Mission Impossible movies. Yeah. Cause no, because that, that's that's now. when he's in the most danger. You think the coronavirus is gonna kill Tom Cruise? No, <laughs> no, he's gonna he's gonna destroy the coronavirus, yeah. man. He's, he's gonna run away from yep. it. No, I think that if Tom Cruise is gonna die tragically, it's more likely that it's gonna be something dumb like a virus, oh, and okay. not jumping off. Would, of would, would you just yeah. be like, are you? Would you be like, are you serious? Like this? This is what took him out of all things. Yeah, that would be- I would. I wouldn't even be able to think about it because it'd be inconsolable. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm Clayton with everyone. We'll see you at the movies. Stay safe. 
Social distance. Bye. Bye. Circuit Breaker is brought to you by awardcircuit.com. Just plug in.